Host the number 17 Aggies of Texas A&M. Hello again, everybody. Along with Artie Gigantino, I'm Ron Thulin. You know, Artie, USM hasn't beaten a ranked team since 1990. They're coming off that disappointing loss against Penn State. And on the other side of the football, for R.C. Slocum, head coach of Texas A&M, this is the kind of game going to keep him up all night. Yeah, it's going to keep him up all night. He's got a couple problems today. Number one, Tiki Hardeman, his best running back, was suspended from the team this week. They need him to have a good game tonight, but he's not here. Secondly, he's in a hornet's nest. This is going to be an emotional setting, and these people are going to go crazy because it is a big game with a wild college football atmosphere. Well, as our drama unfolds, the featured attraction is going to have two of the top defensive players in all of college football. And the first guy is that win, number nine, from Texas A&M. He represents to me what a college football player should be, on and off the field. He is a great, great player. On the other side of the field, number 97, Adalia Thomas is a pass rusher big play defensive end for Southern Miss and he's got to have a big game tonight in fact a lot of people think that he reminds them of a guy by the name of Derek Thomas so this is a defensive football game tonight well, for the a &M defense for the third straight game they're going to be facing an outstanding receiver this week is Sherrard Gideon how will a &M play defense against Gideon when we come back Artie will be on his chalkboard to tell us exactly how to the Rock, affectionately known as M.M. Roberts Stadium in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. For those of you who have been watching the Army game on Fox Sports and Fox Sports Southwest, we welcome you to Hattiesburg as number 17 Texas A&M set to take on Southern Miss. Army leads in that ball game 30-20. to 20. For those of you who have been watching that, we of course will keep you updated on that. Well, at the top of our show, we talked about the great wide receiver for Southern Miss, Sherrod Gideon. How will they play defense against him? Coach Artie Gigantino tells us how. Thanks, Ron. You know, one of the great matchups today, besides the run defense against the running games of both teams, is the passing attack of Southern Miss against the secondary of Texas A&M. Now, what's going to happen today, Sherrod Gideon, who's the great receiver from Southern Miss, is going to line up as a wide receiver over here, he's going to line up in the slot, or he's going to line up as a wide receiver over here. But what's going to happen for Texas A&M, when they play their coverages, the corner to that side is going to jam Gideon. But the trick is going to be the two safeties, number 30, Jen and number 48, Cody. Those guys are going to cheat to Gideon. And when they cheat, they're essentially double-teaming him. It ought to be a great matchup. Had a great matchup, maybe an understatement. They're going to be moving Gideon all over the place this afternoon. We'll keep an eye on that. 84 degrees, relative humidity 74%. We were expecting rain, but the sun, believe it or not, has come out two days ago. We were talking about a tropical storm, and R.C. Slocum, in his 10th year, he was concerned about it. Artie, your keys for A&M. Well, the first thing, their young offensive line has got to block the Southern Miss front. It's going to be very confusing. They've got to make some plays in the passing game. They've got to control Gideon like I just talked about. About, but maybe most important, they have to keep their composure in this wild environment. And for Southern Miss, their head coach is Jeff Bauer in his eighth year, four consecutive years, a winning record. What he's got to do today, they've got to clean up their special teams. They were horrendous last week against Penn State. They've got to run the ball 25 times, slow down at AM counterplay. But on the other side, Ron, they've got to use this crowd. They have got to play to the frenzied environment here. And the environment has been building since midweek when we got here. The people of Hattiesburg, Mississippi, understand the importance of this ballgame. And you know what? I love it because you can feel the electricity up in the air. Well, Brad Hanna is set to kick off. Dante Hall once again injured. We're not sure if he will play at all, and that hurts the kickoff return team for A&M. But that is going to be a moot point as we get it into the end zone, and Texas A&M will begin first and ten from their own 20. Quarterback for Texas A&M, the senior Brandon Stewart. Now, last year he alternated at quarterback, really took over the job in early November, and it is his for his final year. And the line for Texas A&M, it is the heaviest in the RC. Camara. They average just about 300 pounds. They're led by the right guard, Samisi Haimuli. He has started 27 consecutive games. And in the running back spot, look for Sir Parker now to play that H-back spot with Dante Hall injured. We're not sure once again if his full hamstring will be healed up in time to play today. Two tight ends for Texas A&M. Jamar Toombs is the fullback. Sir Parker, the halfback. Stewart's going to roll. They like throw on first down. He keeps it. Loses a yard as the swarming Southern Mississippi defense does the job. Tries Ty Trahan on the stop. 
and the Southern Mississippi defense. Three sophomores and a junior on the defensive line. They were the best in Conference USA last year. DeQuincy Scott, Texas A&M says he's the best. He's a dandy. Linebackers, T.J. Slaughter coming off a medical hardship right in the middle. They call him the war daddy. And in the secondary, Leo Barnes at Rover. The coaches have challenged him. He did not play well against Penn State a couple of weeks ago. Loss of a yard, second and 11 now for Texas A&M. Hodge and Oliver, the wide receivers, they keep it on the ground with Parker. You talked at the top of the show, Artie, of Adelius Thomas. We saw him right there. You know what happens? A team like Southern Miss, they jump around so much, it's very difficult for the blockers up front for A&M to pick up their right guy. Look for a lot of plays today from the Southern Miss defense in the backfield, just like you saw there. Well, this defense was charged, or was really challenged after that Penn State game, as we see Thomas again. They were disappointed. They were embarrassed the way they played. Third down and 15 for the Aggies. Stewart again rolls out, has a man. Passes complete at the 28-yard line to Chris Cole, the junior out of Orange, Texas. But it will be short of the first down. That's a good job that time by Stewart of getting outside. If you're getting a bunch of blitzing inside, you want to be able to run away for, from it. And you know what, Ron? Isn't this great? Because here this place is giving the defense a standing ovation. Well, Jeff Bauer knows how important it is because they don't play a whole lot of home games here. This is the first time in almost a decade they have five home games this season, and especially bringing in a top-20 team. Shane Leckler, preseason All-American, set to kick it away. A line drive, but it'll drive Eddie Shaw back to about the 17. He loses the handle. A lot of white jerseys trying to get away. Up to the 22-yard line, and Leckler does his job. A 56-yard punt, five-yard return. And the quarterback for Southern Miss, he became a father on Wednesday, Lee Roberts, the senior. Two guys have thrown for over 2,000 yards in Southern Miss history. The other, by the way, is a guy named Brent Favre. And for the offensive line, four and five starters return. The strong side is big, but Frank Firestone anchors it. And the running back wide receiver, Brandon Francis, has to have a good game at that H-back spot. He can be very explosive. First and ten, ball on the 23-yard line. First possession for Southern Miss. Lost to Penn State a couple of weeks ago. Looks like an audible here. They keep it on the ground. No running room. The wrecking crew defense. Warwick Coleman leads the charge from that linebacker spot. Let's take a look at the wrecking crew at the line. Memories of the Aggies six-pack back in 1991. This year they have an eight-man rotation. Rocky Bernard leads the charge. One of three sophomores on the line. Linebackers joining that win. It is Warwick Coleman. He continues the tradition of great linebackers at A&M. Third season full-time starter. And in the secondary, could be the best in the Big 12. Rich Cody, a former walk-on, already with two interceptions this year. Army leads Cincinnati, by the way, 30 to 37 to 20 in the fourth quarter. We'll keep you posted. We've got a penalty already thrown coming from the A&M secondary. Official J.C. Lauterbach. You know, that time Southern Miss took too much time in the huddle. But one thing I think A&M, or Southern Miss, would like to do, Artie, is not allow the speed of Texas A&M to get in sync. Yeah, you got to keep them off balance, and that's what they've got to do. This Southern Miss offense now, their two best plays are a form of drop-back passing and the zone play, where they just hand the ball off to Francis or Woods, whoever is the one back in the backfield. After the penalty, it's second down and 24. the middle and again the white jersey surround Brandon Francis not much running room well a and there was expecting the pass but that was a great job that time by Glenn of diagnosing it a and was in their nickel defense they played nickel defense with Glenn in the game against Louisiana Tech almost exclusively last week Louisiana Tech is obviously a passing team Gideon wide to the right he's joined by Todd Pinkston on that right hand side Third and 15, Roberts sees some pressure, steps up, and just throws it away. 
and they face a punting situation. And this is a big key in this ball game. Southern Miss self-destructed against Penn State and the specialty teams already. Well, and the where they self-destructed, Ron, is they had four bad snaps. They missed three field goals. They missed a PAT. In fact, Jeff Brewer told us it was the worst display of special teams he's had in his eight years here as the head football coach. Normally, they do a wonderful job on special teams. But I think the nerves of going up there and playing Penn State, up at Penn State, were just very unsettling to this football team. Jamie Purser standing on his goal line, a spiral. Chris Taylor will take it at about the 43. Penalty flag is thrown. Scoops up the sideline, and he takes a pretty good shot from number 45, Brian Bell. But we do have a penalty flag. It's going to be a clip or an illegal block. Boy, you take Dante Hall out of the equation in punt, return, punt returns. He's number two career in punt returns, 12.4 average. He has two career touchdowns, running back punts, and he can't play for AM today, probably. That takes an awful lot of field position away. Okay, you're going to see number 21, Sean Horn. He's going to push right there in the back. There you go. That's a penalty. That's a good call that time by the officials. That'll push the Aggies back with 11.54 in the first. We'll step aside. No score from Hattiesburg. Brandon Stewart, the quarterback, second possession of the game for A&M, complete to Sir Parker. And he is wrapped up. Hardy, we talked at the top of the show that Tiki Hardiman, the big fullback, has been suspended indefinitely by the team. What does that do to this A&M offense? Well, I tell you, it takes them out of their game plan a little bit. R.C. Slocum told us last night he's got to tweak the offense, meaning he's got to make some adjustments. Hardiman was their counterback. They've got to run counter today against Southern Miss. I don't think the game plan is as extensive right now as it was with Hardiman in the game. Well, you also have Dante Hall injured, Eric Bernard injured. You're down to two scholarship athletes at the tailback spot. Toombs and Parker in the backfield. Parker has some running room right side. Crosses the 40. Up to about the 48-yard line before Ty Trahan, the junior out of Poplarville, Mississippi, makes the stop. College football Saturday on Fox Sports Net is brought to you by Marriott Hotels, Resorts, and Suites. We believe when you're comfortable, you can do anything. You know, it's a good lesson, though. You can never have enough running backs, quote, in your stable. A&M coming into this year had an abundance of running backs. But now, like you said, they're down to the, the bare minimum. You can never have too many running backs. That's what everybody was talking about. How are you going to keep all these guys happy? Well, injuries took care of that. On first and ten, Stewart's pass is almost intercepted by Thomas. He you know, plays basketball for Southern Miss, so we know he can leap. You know, he, this guy is a wonderful athlete that just... He's a wonderful athlete that just didn't play well against Penn State. But you're going to see him here at the top of the screen. He's going to come up the field. Stewart's going to look. He gets right in the line, and he goes up and almost catches it. That's one athletic play. Now, he had 10 passes blocked last year. He was a freshman All-American a few years ago from Equality, Alabama. Says it's just outside of Montgomery. Parker. Stacked up by the black jerseys of Southern Mississippi. That was the best defense in Conference USA last year. They were number 14 in the country against the Russian 1997. Number 18 total defense last season. Yeah, but you know, you look at their stats from last week, and John Thompson, the defensive coordinator, he was so angry when we were talking to him yesterday right. when we talked about the Penn State game. He said, hey, we just got our butts kicked, and I'm quoting him, we got our butts kicked up at Penn State. So he's been hammering on the defense the whole week, and he also said, I'm just as guilty as anybody. Third down and eight for Texas A&M. Bunch of black jerseys coming. Stewart has to dump it off, complete the tombs, and the big 265-pound fullback barely gets back to the line of scrimmage before Brian Bell really tripped him up. Another punting situation for Shane Leckler. Now, this is a great example here of the defensive movement of Southern Miss. Now, watch these guys jump around from side to side. They know where they're going to be. They move around, and what they're doing, Ron, they're trying to create some confusion in the offensive line of Texas A&M. That's good defensive scheme there. Leckler, a high kick. It's going to be short. Great bounce for Texas A&M. Inside the 10, inside the 5, down to about the 3-yard line. 
I think they say it may have been touched by somebody. It may not be at the three. One official's marking it at the three. Another was making a motion like it had been touched by somebody. Well, wherever it is, it's going to be good field position right there for Texas A&M. You know, when you play great defense, both Southern Miss and Texas A&M, the punter is a valuable part of that defense. And that's why I think R.C. Slocum loves his punter, because he knows he gives his defense great field position all the time. Now a 42-yard kick officially, and a Southern Miss will begin first and 10, ball on their own eight-yard line. Still no score here in the first quarter. This is about what we expected this game to be like. Fumble ball is loose. A&M has it, lost it. Let's see if they got it back. It may have been that win who comes up with it, and I think he did. Boy, you can't have turnovers against this A&M team. They were so good last year in turnover margin. Well, you know, they were number three in the country last year. Now, this year, they're number 10 in the country. But stats that, that add up are the turnover stats. That ball just got jarred loose. You're going to see come up inside. At that win, oh, just knocks the ball out of there. That's swarming defense. That is the wrecking crew at its finest. Plus, Ron, you know, turnovers are great. But it's the field position of the turnovers, to me, that really matters. And we're going to talk about this young man oh, during boy. most of the broadcast today. Now, Ronald Flemings is the player who fell out on the football, first and goal ball on the six for the Aggies. Stewart falls down at about the 14-yard line. Some kind of miscommunication there. It looked like it was going to be some kind of zone play to the left of the offense, but Stewart, for some reason, didn't go to hand the ball off. So some miscommunication between the quarterback and the backfield. That looked like Derek Spiller, the tight end, also was moving in one direction. Everybody else was moving in the other. You know, speaking of tight ends, I think Texas A&M, between Dan Campbell and Derek Spiller, probably have the best set oh, of yeah. tight ends in the country. Loss of seven, second and goal from the 13. Odds wide to the right. Three-step drop going into the end zone. Touchdown. No, he dropped the football. Boy, the pass was there by Brandon Stewart. He put it right on the money. Ray Dorr, the quarterback coach, loves to throw this pattern down in the, quote, red zone. It's a fade pattern. Oliver goes up for the ball. The ball is well thrown by Brandon Stewart. It's very difficult in this area for a defender to, to defend that particular play. Southern Miss dodged a bullet. Third and goal from the 13, and Brandon Stewart wants to talk about it. You know, that's a good move by him because you don't want to make a mistake down here, Ron. you got to get a touchdown. Obviously, they're going to settle for a field goal if they don't get it, right. but you want to come out of here with a touchdown. And I'll tell you, a and right now is not having a great year on offense. If you look at them, rushing offense, they're 76th in the country. Total offense, they're 102nd in the country, Ron, out of 112 different teams. So R.C. Slocum and Steve Craigthorpe, the offensive coordinator, and Ray Dorr, they have really had some problems this year getting going, as you can see the totals here. So what, illustrate. A&M knows they have to get their running game going. That really hurt them, I think, in the Florida State game. Wouldn't you agree, Artie, that they didn't get the ball game going the way they wanted to on the ground? Absolutely, absolutely. And it's, you know, the running game. We always talk about the running game. It's still the most important part of football. The good teams run the football and are successful at it, and the good teams stop the run. Now, that's John Thompson right there, the defensive coordinator from Southern Miss. Now, he's a fired-up guy. He's from Arkansas. He's coached around the country. He had a couple off to leave this past year but this this defense illustrates to me his personality you know he's a wiry guy and a fired up guy just like this southern mississippi defense no tight ends hodge taylor and cole the wide receivers in the ball game for texas a&m third and goal from the 13. the crowd getting into it southern misses they draw off the intensity of the crowd Stewart, three-step drop, goes alley-oop again. This time it is incomplete, intended for Chris Cole. Stewart, again, a nice touch pass. Cole not able to bring it down. And we've got a Southern Miss player down. I think it's Terrence Parrish, the cornerback out of Theodore, Alabama. They're going to take a look at Parrish in the end zone.
It is a beautiful day in Hattiesburg, Mississippi, and we've got a dandy going on inside of M.M. Roberts Stadium. I'm Ron Thulin, joined by Artie Gigantino as number 17, Texas A&M, taking on the Golden Eagles of Southern Miss. Beautiful day for football. We expected rain. It's clear. And R.C. Slocum came into this game. He told us last night, we've got our hands full. So far, that's been the case, although he's had two drop passes in the end zone. Well, he's had two drop passes, but, you know, R.C.'s a smart guy. He's been around the horn, so to speak, and he knows what kind of environment this is and can be down here at Southern Miss. So he was skeptical about it, but hey, you got to show up and play the game. And Jeff Brewer, he's working all week on getting this place into a state of mind where the crowd is an advantage. Well, Parrish is up in the end zone. He's limping off. We hope to get an update on his injury. And then we'll have the field goal attempt spotted at the 20-yard line. 30-yard field goal attempt for Russell Bynum, the sophomore out of Lamar, Texas. Broke former a &M kicker Kyle Bryant's high school record kicking the football. Shane Leckler, the punter, is the holder. The snapper, Carl, Kyle Lednicki, 410 snaps without an error. Officially a 31-yarder. Good snap, hooks it up right through the middle of the uprights. First to strike, it is Texas A&M. 7.54 in the first quarter. They lead 3-0 thanks to the fumble by Southern Miss. Brandon Francis back for Southern Miss. A booming kickoff well into the end zone. Southern Miss is not going to try to bring that out. First and 10 from their own 20-yard line for the Golden Eagles. Fox Sports News primetime is your I was sort of surprised talking to the Southern Miss coaches yesterday, Artie, that they really believe they can run the football in this game. Yeah, they do, but I'm not sure I agree with them because of the speed of A&M on defense. I think what they've got to do is they've got to try to run it, but they're going to make their big plays throwing it. Roberts will put it up. Pass is complete underneath the coverage. Room to run it is Gideon. It's run after the catch. You're going to see it right up top, come inside there, catches the ball. It's a well-designed play. It's going to come inside. Now, a has got to get somebody, like I talked about on the chalkboard, that's going to be sitting there, the safety, to try to tackle him. Pickup of 17 on the play. Southern Miss is really a passing team that keeps opponents just off balance with running. And they will do it here. Dwayne Woods, the redshirt freshman, up to the 40-yard line. Pickup of four on the play. They like this young man from Slidell, Louisiana, leading rusher in Louisiana high school history. And there's been a lot of great players and a lot of great running backs come out of Louisiana, so that is amazing. But you know what? He's a guy that squats like out of this world. He's like a 500-pound squatter for a little guy. That's a wonderful accomplishment. Raymond Walls wide to the left. Gideon on the top of your screen. Probably the best receiving core in all of Conference USA. Tulane may argue that. Roberts sees the rush. He's just going to take a seat. That win on the blitz came right up the middle, untouched, and the senior from Rockport give him a sack. Well, one of the things Mike Hankowitz, the defensive coordinator, wants to do is try to keep this offense off balance. And by doing that, it's blitzing on certain downs that, that in the past they have not. Now, what happens there, though, Ron? Roberts falls. He slips, and he fell down. Now, he was lucky he did because I think he, yeah. he saved himself a pretty good lick. He, he slipped on the surface. He would have been detonated. <laughs> Loss of nine. You don't want a new daddy to get detonated. He can't hold his son tomorrow. Third and 16, Roberts from the shotgun hit as he releases the ball. Incomplete intended for Gideon. Man, 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 Holdman man. is the one who really put the pressure on and lowered the boom on Lee Roberts. Southern or AM thought that the offensive line of Southern Miss is a little vulnerable. Yeah, and you know what? Roberts takes a AM is going to try to knock him down to the ground as many times as they possibly can today. And you can bet there was a little conversation going on between those two players. Purser's first punt was 45 yards. He's standing a 17, his second kick of the afternoon. Very little pressure, spiraling. Fair catch. 
Pitch is being called right at the 25-yard line. That'll go down as a 44-yard kick as Chris Taylor decides not to run it out. 5.47 left in the first. The Aggies lead by a field goal. Go like we thought it would be. Parker hits soon as he gets the ball, and he may lose a yard on the play. This Southern Miss defense we saw in the film in Penn State, they're jumping around all over the place. Steve Craig for Texas A&M, the offensive coordinator, says it's like Gigantino used to play a Cal. You better believe it. But you know what's great about it, though, Ron? At least from a defensive standpoint, Texas A&M had a hard time this week getting their scout team to do it properly. Scout team guys follow cards. And all of a sudden, you get guys jumping around. It's really hard to give a picture for your A&M offense, you know, when, it, when it, it's a complicated defense like this. Well, a &M would love to throw the ball to take advantage of the wide receivers, but this time they keep it on the ground again. Sir Parker makes something out of nothing. We talked about T.J. Slaughter, the junior out of Birmingham, Alabama, how he's just a war daddy. This is one tough hombre. Yeah, I'm not sure what a war daddy is, but this guy is a tough football player. That win gets a lot of the publicity, but this guy is a mean, tough guy that plays hard. And that's a wonderful linebacker play right there because you know what? He had a desire, a passion to get to the football. God, I like good linebackers, Ron. Well, that's the kind of guy you want at oh, that position. absolutely. Third down and four for Texas A&M. And Stewart will have to burn his second time out of the opening quarter. And boy, I tell you, you're R.C. Slocum. You don't want to see that. No, you don't want to see it, but I think Stewart's smart because he's not sure. Now, the problem is it's not unlimited timeouts. <laughs> you only have three. And he's talking to Ray Dorr there, the quarterback coach, saying, now, you only got one timeout left. So we're going to have to get to the huddle, out of the huddle a little bit quicker, get on the line of scrimmage, and go run the play. See, this is where the counter game from A&M should come in handy. You know, you get up on the line of scrimmage, you run run the counter, the counter basically everybody blocks down, two guys pull and kick out. It's a simple play, but it's very good against a multiple defense like this. We were really expecting, I think, A&M to throw on first and ten. They did on their first possession. They haven't since then. What do you think R.C. Slocum sees in this defense that says, I'm not going to do that? Well, I, I think what he wants to do, he wants to play it close to the vest for a while. Against Florida State and against Louisiana Tech, they threw the ball on first down 23 different times. One of the reasons he wants to do that is to loosen up the defense. Defenses get eight and nine guys on the line of scrimmage against mm -hmm. A&M on first down so he says hey I'm not going to try to be stubborn run the ball at him I'm going to try to throw it to make him loosen up a little bit that stems back to the cotton ball he said he was frustrated because their safeties were always involved in every play he wants to throw the ball deep he only needs four for the first on third down Stewart lets it fly in the fat flat pass is complete but I think he may have missed the first down he came back but we have a penalty in the backfield of A&M the catch was made by Cole but he took about three yards the wrong way It's going to be close, Ron, but I don't think he made it based on the spot yeah. that we see here. It looks like an infraction, however, against the offensive line of Texas A&M. They're talking to the Golden Eagles. This is a tough call because you have to consider A&M has gone for four, on fourth down five times. They're five for five this year. Yeah, but I They're a little me, deep, though. I know. It's, hey, if, if it's a 15-yarder, you got to take it and yeah. move them back. Oh, on the offense. Was on Seth McKinney, the redshirt freshman out of Austin, whose brother Steve McKinney played for the Aggies last year. Coach, it's, it's, it's Toby McCarthy right here, number 56. You can see him holding right there. It's a good call. He was getting driven back into the backfield, and he just latched on and brought the defender down with him. Well, Leckler will kick it away. He's at a 58-yarder, a 42-yarder, and he drives this one deep again. What a great punt. Eddie Shaw inside the five. Right up the middle, has some running room, crosses the 20 up to the 21-yard line. Boy, what a leg by, by Shane Leckler, who should be an All-American this year. 57-yard kick, 12-yard return. Well, Dre Bly leads the swarming Tar Heel D as they hook up with Stanford at 6.30 Eastern time and at 10.15 Eastern time. Hayden Fry leads his Hawkeyes into a desert duel with the number Hattiesburg. Aggies with a field goal after the turnover by the Golden Eagles. 
People jumping all over the place. Southern Miss said A&M the first to jump. Well, Frank Firestone saw somebody from A&M jump off sides, so he just snapped the ball ahead of count, and Roberts went down on his knee. Frank Firestone is a smart guy. He, that doesn't surprise us. He's a 4.0 student. You know what his major is? Management Information Systems. What is that? Look people's phone numbers up? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But he's got a 4.0 in it, and he is clearly the anchor. Outside. Defense. First down. Well, tack on five yards, and the Golden Eagles will take over first and ten on their own 21-yard line. Things have settled into the kind of game we thought it would be. Two good defenses just going at each other. Dwayne Woods, the lone setback. He has the football tries to the left side of that defensive line of Texas A&M. No going. That was a zone play. Big old Shedrick Blackman, a big 315-pound offensive guard, pulled around, but he couldn't find anybody to block. I tell you, I, I like this guy. He was an honorable mention, preseason All-American. He is six foot six, 318 pounds. Mm. Came in when he was three as a freshman at 360 pounds, but he's gotten his weight down and he's turning into an outstanding football player. Second down and seven. Two wide receivers to the right of your screen. They're going to keep it on the ground. The big hit right off the bat. Cornelius Anthony, the sophomore from Missouri City, Texas, lowered the boom on Woods. But he did get the first down. You know, I like this Texas A&M defense. Kind of a no-name defense. It is. But, you know, here's old Blackman right there. He's the left guard. Now, watch him pull when Woods gets the ball. It's a zone play up inside. And Woods finds a hole, and he gets up in there. The linebacker, Cornelius Anthony, made a good play. But I like the idea they're trying to pull big old Cedric Blackman yeah. out in front of Woods. First good positive yards for Southern Miss. And they jump off sides, and it negates everything. Southern Miss already's had two weeks to think about this. Is this too much time? Jeff Bauer said, I wanted to play. Let's listen into the call first. Dead ball on the offense. Five yard penalty. Repeat first down. Picking that up, uh, he he wanted to play again. Yeah, you know, I don't agree with him, though. They, they were embarrassed up at Penn State. They had another three days of practice the week that they had off. And, Ron, what they did, they went back to fundamentals. They went back to the basics. And then last Sunday, they started working on Texas A&M. This is a young football team. What he did was get an extra week of practice. you got to make those things to your advantage. And I'm sure the coaches did. But, I, hey, clean up what you have to clean up first. Gideon now in the slot walls wide to the right. Roberts keeps it on the ground. Some running room. The redshirt freshman, one of the top squatters, believe it or not, weightlifting wise on this team, picks up some yardage. He is a little guy at five foot seven, 189 pounds, but the coaches really believe that that's deceiving. It is deceiving because there's a difference between short and little and stocky. He's, he's a short guy, but he's well put together. And, you know, there is a difference. Second down and five inside of two minutes here in the first quarter. Roberts will go from the shotgun, three wide receivers in the ballgame. Little timing pattern intended for Raymond Walls, the sophomore out of Kentwood, Louisiana. Just threw it behind him. Roberts has a strong arm, but I think he throws it only as hard as he really has to. He's such an accurate passer. That, that's a great way to describe him. He's an accurate passer because when you see him on the field in practice, you don't say, oh, my goodness, that's Jim Kelly or Dan Marino. That's not him. But this guy is a winner. He's a guy that's 13 and 6 in 19 starts here. He knows the offense. He is clearly the engineer of this offense. Well, he needs to engineer five yards for the first down. Pressure put on, he gets away from it, dumps it off into the flat. Another first down, Brandon Francis, they're coming out of that H-back spot. He has the best hands of anybody in that backfield. Well, he should. He used to be a wide receiver. He was a wide receiver a year ago that they moved back to running back. But you know what? We're talking about Roberts there. Throw the word poise on top of him yep. also. That was a poised job that time by the quarterback. Well, he had a baby boy on Wednesday, Brennan Lee Roberts, or I should say his wife Tracy did. And he said, I'm never going to complain about my injuries with football after seeing her go through labor. First and ten, minute and a half left in the first quarter. First sustained drive by the Golden Eagles. And they're doing a nice job on the ground. Only pick up a couple of yards with Woods again, but 
that you can see that what they're trying to establish here. They're trying to establish control of the tempo of the game, keep A&M's offense off the field, but also, Ron, they're trying to wear down this A&M defense by running the ball at them and keeping them off balance, dumping the ball outside. And you know, they don't have a complicated offense. It's no. a simple offense with a lot of different formations, but they only have like two or three running plays and about six or seven base patterns. Now Larry Kick, the offensive coordinator, made them the most productive offense in school history last year. Roberts, little play action again, pressure by a and and they're going to drop Roberts again. Ronald Flemons, the sophomore out of Marshall High School in San Antonio, Texas. True sophomore with the stop. You know, one thing about Plemons, you're going to see him come into the screen. He's got the longest arms, quote, on the defensive line. He's a guy just reaches out and grabs him. Wow, that's a nice job. You're going to see the rush up here. Now, Plemons is the defensive end. He's going to come up the field and make the play. Comes inside, goes and finds the quarterback, and reaches across with that right arm. That's a good defensive line play, Ron Thulin. Boy, that kid plays hard. Inside of 10 seconds, let's see if Southern Miss will get the playoff on third and 18, and they will. A little design screen did not fool anybody in a white jersey. Rocky Bernard, the sophomore from Baytown, Texas, a big one at 6'3", 269, makes the stop. And that's the way quarter number one is going to come to an end. Southern Miss with the fumble inside their own 10-yard line, thanks to the hit by Dat Wynn. They get the field goal, and that's where we stand, heading into quarter number two down here when you discuss that but you know he made a great statement to me in private Ron that he said you know I had to show my players how I dealt with adversity and he went right back to work but he said you know hey we told the players to do that all the time but we as coaches sometimes have got to be the example and he has been an example to a lot of us Southern Miss has to kick it away on fourth and 17 first has got a couple of 45 yarders Chris Taylor Stacked up a big time hit. Oh, daddy, that's a detonation. Check the benchers. 40 yard kick, nine yard on the return. And AM will take over. Perfect fit at this oh, yeah. university. Played here, obviously, was an assistant coach here, but he's the right guy to coach this football team. Ernest Rhodes now in at that tailback spot with Bernard and Hall injured up. Rhodes, a sophomore out of Terrell, Texas. A true sophomore, had a back injury last year. Well, that was Watts, check that, on the, on the stop. No, he almost didn't play. He had a problem in summer school, and he was granted his eligibility the day before practice started. But he's a good football player. He's a big guy. He's 6'1", 212 pounds. And when he hits you from that strong safety position, you know it. Boy, a &M just having to shake up that offense with the suspension of Tiki Hardeman. Pass is complete. Chris Cole has some running room. Look out. In the Golden Eagle territory before Larry Watts of Columbia, Mississippi drags him down from behind. You know, Ron, it's a team game, and you're going to see Cole out here catch the ball. But watch the block come into your screen by number 79, Shea Holder. He freed that up. That's a team effort right there and a good design. But give the credit to the big guys. He's right there. He's going to come out. Watch him. Watch him. Go get him, big fella. Boom. You see him knock somebody down. Wonderful play by the offensive tackle. Pick up of 25 on the play. Rhodes again. Thomas is the one who took the legs from underneath him. And you know what, going back to that last play, they will show that play 15 times when they show the football team the, at the video. That's one of those clickers. Just keep clicking that. Back and, and have a good time, especially if you win. You love it when big guys get out in the field. And there's a big guy that's making a name for himself in college football, Adelius Thomas. Well, RC has challenged this A&M offense. If somebody has to step up today, so far it has been cold. Second down and seven. On the ground again, straight up the middle, just about a yard short of the first down. Rhodes stopped by Jose Gonzalez from that free safety spot out of Jacksonville, Florida. Rhodes, the ball carrier. R.C. Slocum. Talking to somebody. Okay, watch the snap. Now, you, we usually just talk about this when there's a mistake, but that time it's a perfect exchange between center and quarterback. See, we're giving those centers some credit now. Hey, remember, okay. if he doesn't snap the ball, the play can't start. That's exactly right. It's third down and just about a yard to go. 
go for the Aggies. Oh my, no way. T.J. Slaughter. The guy says he enjoys modeling. Right now, he modeled the ball carrier right into the turf. Watch T.J. now, number 34, come into your picture. AM's going to run a blast play. That is beautiful, Ron Thulin. Linebacker play. Guy, I like this guy. You know, he's fired up. He's emotional. He played for me. i take him at that win on any college team in the United States. AM, five for five. They had a fourth down and 17 last week. They threw it and got the first down. They keep it on the ground. They've got the first down with about three to spare. Rhodes just over that right side, following behind those big guys of Hamuli and Vincent. Slaughter just couldn't do enough. Couldn't do enough. You know, I talked to R.C. Slocum the other day about going forward on fourth down, and he said, if my offensive linemen are blocking well, I have a tendency to go for it. It's an emotional decision, he says, made by his gut. It's a gut feel. And that was an example right there of his offensive line doing a great job for him. So R.C.'s gut feeling was correct again. First and 10, ball on the 33 for AM. Play action pass into the flat. The big guys get out again and give them running room. Look out. Again, it is Chris Cole, and again, the big offensive line getting out and helping out. You're going to like seeing this replay, I think, Coach. Yeah, it's the exact same play that they ran before. It's a toss out screen with the lineman pulling up in front. Now, watch big old number 78 up in front there. Andy Vincent, he's going to come into your screen and get a block. That's a wonderful job. But he keeps his feet moving, and he just gives the guy a pancake down, on, down to the ground. That's great hustle. Pick up of 20 on the play. First and 10 ball on the 12. The Aggies can get a first down. They keep it on the ground to Rhodes. He is going to be dropped for about a three-yard loss. One thing I like about Southern Miss, even though they've given up a couple big plays here on this drive, this is the kind of defense that they have to play. They started it about three years ago, but they've got to play a little loosey-goosey, a little on the edge, and I think we've seen that so far today. You know, every every program's got to have its own personality. You just can't do what the other guys do. And I think that's a smart move here because this is their thing. This is what they're identified with. It's, quote, on the edge, and I love it. Loss of four officially. Tim scooting over. Stewart rolls out. Pass is going to be caught incomplete. Into the hands of Toombs from Kilgore, Texas. A big freshman, Roy McGee, on the coverage. A redshirt freshman out of Mandeville, Louisiana. You know, now Toombs is a big old guy that doesn't catch well. You're going to see Toombs right here. But if I were Stewart, I would have kept the ball and run, Ron Thune, because Toombs is 260 pounds. He is not a pass. Receiver. Brandon Stewart's got to tuck that baby and try to get into the end zone. Good job by the Golden Eagle defense. Third and 14 for the Aggies. Stewart pumps. Being chased. He's going to be dumped back at the 25. Roy McGee again, the red shirt. Freshman almost left the team, said he was homesick. <laughs> He's not going to be homesick tonight after a big play like that. He plays the outside linebacker position that they call the stinger here. So AM facing fourth and 23 are going to kick the field goal. Russell Bynum with the ball spotted at the 32 yard line. The line drive kick is going to hook around the uprace. Bottoms 42-yarder. He already has one this afternoon, and that has given AM the 6-0 lead. We still have 9.46 left in the first half. This is the big play. You're going to see Roy McGee come off the corner here, but then you're going to see Marvin Brown come in here. But I want to show you something first here, Rondo. There is no defenders right there. Unorthodox defense. But watch Brown come from the outside to the end, and watch old McGee go grab him. That's great defensive scheme. It's not conventional. No, it's a little it unorthodox. But it works. Now the coaching staff gives credit to Tim Rose, who's now at Boston College for real, really refining their defensive scheme. Brandon Francis. Up to the 30, still on his feet. 
Finally knocked out of bounds at the 35-yard line, a 32-yard return for Francis, and that's where the Golden Eagles will begin play. Your defense is playing well. Now, you're a defensive coach. You got them fired up. The offense, they got to do something. Now, what the offense has got to do here, Ron Thorne, is not mess it up. Don't fumble the ball. Just keep pounding away, drive the football, and something good will happen. But the offense cannot make the big mistake. And I'm not saying don't be aggressive, but just don't turn the ball over again, you know, inside the 10-yard line. One back set again, three wide receivers to the left, one to the right. Roberts will put it up into the flat, off the hands of Sherrod Gideon. Well, it's been a tough week for Lee Roberts. At 4 o'clock in the morning on Wednesday, his wife Tracy gave birth to Brennan Lee Roberts, and that is Brennan Lee Roberts. Congratulations to Tracy and and also to Lee. He said, you know, it puts a whole different spin on things having a kid. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. What a cutie. Even showed up at practice Wednesday afternoon. Well, it just goes to show you the maturity of this young exactly. man to be able to be a quarterback on a football team, a father, go to school. Wow. Second and ten, pass knocked down. Michael Jamison from the strong safety spot, the sophomore out of Colleen, Texas, with the pass breakup. That's his fourth of the year. You know, he knocked down three against Louisiana Tech last week, and he's got a perfect timing there because he just comes from the secondary and literally leaps in the alleyway and knocks the ball down. That's, that's good timing, but it's also really good athletic ability. And another third down situation for the Golden Eagles. Roberts will try it from the shotgun. A&M showing blitz. Here they come. Roberts scrambles. Pass. Is it complete? Yes. But it'll be short of the first down. Raymond Walls, the sophomore out of Kentwood, Louisiana, with the reception. Now that win again, number nine, coming right up. Okay, that win is right here. Now watch when he blitzes. They end up picking him up. But when you pick up that win, somebody else is going to be free. And this time it's Aaron Glenn right there. It's a little palm stunt inside. That win ends up being the decoy, and old Glenn comes around, and he's clean. I think Dad likes blitzing because he said, I'm not really told us last night. I'm not good at pass protection. I mess up on the time. Pass defense? Yeah, pass defense. You know what? Every defensive player likes blitzing, Ron. Again, Jamie Purser is fourth punt of the afternoon, and it's a high one. Chris Taylor backpedaling to the 10. He's not going to get a whole lot. Maybe gets five on the return. And with 8.26, Texas A&M nursing a 6-0 lead will have the football. Happy birthday. Four hours. Congratulations, Southern Miss. Up the middle, A&M running the football again. Rhodes getting some playing time. If you just joined us, Tiki Hardeman suspended indefinitely by Texas A&M yesterday. Dante Hall, a pulled muscle. Eric Bernard, also a pull. He hadn't practiced in three days. That gives Parker and Rhodes some opportunity to play. You know, here's a good example now. Watch, watch the center right there. Toby McCarthy just take his man and ride him up the field. Pick up a five, second and five for the Aggies. Staying with what's working for him, right up the middle again. Well, you know, Ron, A&M's having a little bit of a problem blocking these complicated fronts. So one of the things that they have adjusted to do right now is run the football right at them. Don't try to get outside. Don't try to throw the ball too much. Just hand the ball off on the zone play and run right at them. Which is what Penn State basically did. Absolutely. Just line it up and knock them off their, uh, their rocker. Third and two, big play for the Golden Eagle defense. Stewart, the quick pass, off the head, incomplete. It was almost a Leroy Hodge to Chris Cole play. That pass was motored by Brandon Stewart. Hit Chris Cole right in the face mask. And what an emotional lift that play is for this crowd here. You can hear them just going crazy. And it's also demoralizing yeah. for Texas A&M. Here you have, you know, third and two and a half, third and three. You got to be able to make that if you're R.C. Slocum. Shane Leckler almost has the punt block. Eddie Shaw should get some return yardage. Cut 
gets up. We have a penalty flag thrown. This may be for naught. Penalty flag on the far side of the field. A great return by Eddie Shaw, but it might be coming back. Boy, the, the Southern Miss coaches are out on the field just yelling at the officials on the far side. Well, it's going to be an illegal block or a clip against Southern Miss. 46-yard kick, 42 on the return. But the penalty will go against Southern Miss. Ron, take it from an old special teams coach in the National Football League. It's the most difficult thing in the world to teach. It's open field blocking. Mm -hmm. When you're blocking for a return guy, there's all kinds of crazy angles. It's not the normal football angle type thing. This man does a wonderful job of teaching special teams, but it's difficult to instruct a young player in the open field. Already mentioned the fact that it's very special for Jeff Bauer, the specialty teams, and we talked about that. But we've made some changes, uh, trying to find some guys that want to get the job done, and and uh, uh, hopefully we'll execute better. We had so many breakdowns. I think it's, I know by far it's the worst special teams game we've ever had since I've been here, and, and, and I'm a big believer in it. We've got to we've got to be solid today. Well, that wasn't too solid. Cost them about 40 yards. They keep it on the ground. Francis, not much running room. Warwick Holman there to make the stop. We'll step aside. Let's send it to our College Football Saturday studios for a game break. Ron, UCLA visiting Houston. Freddie Mitchell last week, he caught it. To UCLA trying to make a 2-0 against teams again in Texas. And they've got a great quarterback at UCLA. Roberts passes incomplete, and Gideon sort of short-armed it as he was coming across the middle. It looked like he started to hesitate a little bit. Well, there was about three Aggie defenders standing there waiting <laughs> for him, and I'm not sure I would have went up for that ball, but that's what happens when you throw inside tight patterns. Roberts had some mustard on that ball. Third down and eight now for, for Southern Miss. You know what he's got to do, though, Ron? He's got to stop looking at Gideon because it seems like every pass that's been thrown today has been thrown towards Gideon, right. and he's looking right at him when he initially comes out, you know, getting ready to throw the football. Look around at other receivers. In the shotgun, Raymond Walls wide to the right. Pinkston was in motion. The pressure put on, and Roberts is going to be dropped for a loss. Great pressure again by AM, and it is Warwick Holman. Second in tackles back in 96, 28 consecutive starts for this young man. Well, he's a linebacker by trade, but in nickel, he gets down and he goes into a stance, and he just runs right by big old Lester Pope from Southern Miss. That's called a speed pass rush. Again, Loss of four on the play. Excuse me, Ron. Again, he's a linebacker that they put down in their nickel and tell him to get into a three-point stance. Purser back to kick it away. Chris Taylor standing at about his own 35-yard line. Not very high. Taylor will take it at about the 38. He steps out of bounds at the 40. About a 39-yard kick, and that's where Texas A&M will take over with 5.16 left in the half. The Aggies up by a couple of field goals. Seeing something about Dante Culpepper, but it was a tough day today, but he had his hands full, really. He's a great, great athlete, and it'll be interesting to see where he goes in the National Football League draft. Well, Dante Hall making his first appearance, number 34, and he's going to have his first carry. No signs of a pulled hammy on that one. Crosses the 50 down to about the 47-yard line. You know, when you look at him, he's a shifty little guy. He's a smaller type player. He's 5'8", 190, but he's a shifty, low center of gravity guy that's very, very hard to bring down because he can stop on a dime and really make you miss, which is why he's a great punt returner. He averages just about nine yards as far as all-purpose yards every time he touches the football. That's pretty good. That's not too shabby. He picked up seven on that play. The big fullback, Jamar Toombs. We got to get him a nickname, don't you think, Artie? Yeah, you know, he's either a, a bus or he's certainly a gib, a guard in the backfield. 
Now let's take a look at our degree game summary. Item of AM, a couple of field goals from 41 and 31 yards out. Roberts having a tough day, 4 of 10, just 33 yards. Neither team really exploding on offense, but give credit to both defenses. Hey, that's called a defensive struggle so far, but it's exciting because this crowd is into defense here. Third down and one. Again, AM in Golden Eagle territory. Keep it on the ground. Hall prancing and dancing. Look out. He has broken it to the 20. One man to beat. Touchdown, a &M. If he is hurt, I don't want to see him when he's healthy. Just like I said. He's got real speed, number one, but he's shifty and he can stop on a dime. All this is is a stretch play outside. But look at him make the tacklers miss. Now, that's not very good tackling, Ron Thorn, but it's also great running. And it's also a wonderful leap into the end zone. Now, John Thompson, the defensive coordinator, was upset last week because he missed, his defense missed 21 tackles against Penn State. He missed about seven on that particular exactly. play. Because they had him behind the line of scrimmage. But it's hard to tackle good back. <laughs> exactly. That's why he has over 3,000 career yards. They're going for two with Sir Parker. And they've got it. So the Aggies are back on schedule. Sir Parker takes it in for two, and it's a 14 to nothing lead by Texas A&M. 4-14 left to play in a half. That was a very impressive drive by the Aggies. Now you're going to see old Toombs right here. He comes across. He's going to go out. He's going to get a block. He does a good, solid job. But the guy who makes it work is Dante Hall by himself, by avoiding tacklers, shifting, getting up in the air. Look at that. He's off the ground right there. And he just has a determination to keep going to the end zone. And he can also fly. And the two-point conversion. This is a good call. Now, all this is like a 28 pitch, a toss to the outside to Sir Parker. Gets a good block. I don't believe that Southern Miss was set, Ron Thulin. It was a quick play. I don't believe that they were set and ready for that particular play. Well, he comes in, has a couple of big carries, gets his first touchdown of the year, and the Aggies lead by a couple of touchdowns. I'll tell you what I was impressed with. Andy Vincent, that right tackle, the big kid at 6'3", 300 pounds out of Sulphur, Louisiana. He had a block on that drive. Now watch, I don't know if you can see it on the replay, but my goodness, he he holds his block just well. Look at this. Well, you can't see when he comes back around and gets another ball. There it is. But I see some guys knocking Southern Miss defenders down. They're on the ground, and that's what you want from your offensive line. And this was one of the big question marks coming into this oh. year, the offensive line of Texas A&M because of the new people. Well, J.B. Grimes says our offensive line's improved every week. Big improvement. Well, you know, offensive linemen should improve every week because to me, they're the smartest group of football players on everybody's team. Those are the guys that have the best GPAs of any member right. of the team. Those good old offensive linemen. That's across the board in college football. It really is from the one. Takes a pop at the 10, and that is where he is going to be stopped. What a first hit from Toya Jones. A defensive back, he's a senior. Boy, I tell you what, I want to hear that thing because Toya lowered the boom. That's going to take about four or five cavities out of Brandon <laughs> Francis's mouth. We heard that baby up here, and you're going to see Toya, number five, come from the left of your screen. Mm -hmm. That is helmet on helmet, and that's a guy really playing hard on special teams. And that, as a special teams coach, that's what you want. That kind of effort and that kind of spirit running down the field. Oh, why well, A&M was getting kudos for that coverage. The specialty team of Southern Miss got a little chewing out when they came over to the sideline. From the 11, Roberts at quarterback, Woods in the backfield. Southern Miss just hasn't been able to do a whole lot against this wrecking crew defense. Brandon Jennings coming up from that free safety spot, making his 25th consecutive start. He makes the stop. Little programming note, next week on College Football Saturday, Navy takes on Sean King and the Green Wave at 3.30 Eastern time. Then at 7, and I will be in beautiful Boulder for that ball game. Rick Neuheisel seems to have that Colorado program yeah. right now back on track. Pickup of three, second and seven. Big hole. Woods, running room, crosses the 30 up to the 32-yard line. Jennings and Cody having to make the stop. 
first good explosion that we've seen by the offensive line of Southern Miss. Quick hitting play. Now watch Richie Davidson right there, number 74. He pulls. It's a trap. But the runner, what he does, he turns and he cuts it all the way back. Woods does a good job of running against the grain. But it was supposed to be a trap on the right side of the offense. But Woods saw a hole and he cut it all the way back. That's a pickup of 18. First and 10. Ball on the 32 as the clouds start to roll in here in Hattiesburg. Francis spinning, trying to stay on his feet, able to get a couple of yards. I really think this offensive line for Southern Miss last year was sort of a learning year for them. They really feel that this year a lot is expected of them. Well, they're experienced, they're smart, but you know what the coaches told us that I thought was really impressive? They felt in the offseason the offensive line did the best job of physically preparing for this season more than any other group on the team. And that's really unusual because you get all these big guys and stuff yeah. in there. So, you know, yes, they are very happy with the offensive line. I think they're playing okay today. Gideon in motion, wind showing the blitz. Here they come again. Able to get one yard on the play. That win is so mobile. He's bouncing around all over the place, and you have to keep your eye on him. Well, that was the same blitz they ran before. It's more of a pass rush type blitz. But you're going to see that win right here, number nine. He's going to come up in here, but it runs right into the draw play. And you're going to see 23 Aaron Glenn again, but the play runs right into that win. Mike Hankowitz could not call, could not have called a better blitz for that particular play. Third and five. Pinkston and Walls to the right, Gideon to the left. Pressure, Roberts has a man, Pinkston, couple of white jerseys incomplete. Nice coverage by Texas A&M, but then we have a penalty flag thrown late, right at the 40-yard line. And Southern Miss is cheering, must be against A&M. Well, an A&M player came up and just slugged big offensive tackle Henry McClendon. And that's why McClendon's down there celebrating. He better know that Henry wants to be a criminal justice kind of guy. He wants to be a policeman. Don't be smacking him. Dead ball. Personal. On the defense. 15 yards. Mm. First down. You and I know R.C. Slocum pretty well. He gets livid over this kind of penalty. Yeah, he's not going to be a happy camper about that. But, you know, for the most part, this has been a very well-played game. Exactly. And the emotions are high, and sometimes you just lose your cool. But they'll settle down because I know RC will have a few choice words for them yeah. when they come to the sideline. There's old Bill Johnson, the defensive line coach, talking to RC Slocum. Francis in the backfield. Stays on his feet, gets up to the 50, but then he is going to be shoved back. But they'll put it down to the 50. Just a reminder, coming up at halftime, our Marriott Halftime Report, Kevin Frazier, Kellen Winslow back in the studio. Talk about Baylor and Kellen Winslow. will also have a little telestrator lesson going on for us. Also talk about Dante Culpepper. Stay with us for the Marriott Halftime Report here on College Football Saturday. 65 seconds left in the half, second and 10. Roberts looks right, pulls it down. Penalty flag is thrown. Pass is complete again to Pinkston. Pinkston got leveled, got back up, and then made the catch. But it may be a holding call against Southern Miss. Well, that's where the flag was thrown, so all indications are that it is a holding. But again, you see the poise of Lee Roberts running around back there, finding a receiver, taking his time, and making the play. But more importantly, Ron, he stayed alive. He kept the play alive and didn't throw the interception, didn't you know, get the ball knocked loose from his hands. So again, I think that's poise by Lee Roberts that we're seeing. Well, I think the infraction will go against Richie Davidson blocking below the knee. Jeff Bauer does not like it. Bauer also one of the coaches, the bright young guys in college football today had a lot of overtures. Arkansas was mentioned. He said he wanted to stay right here, just signed a new four-year contract. Well, they did a wonderful job last year going, went to the Liberty Bowl and just demolished Pitt 41-7. to So, you know, they ended last season not only ranked in the top 20, but on a real high emotional Stop, In a game like this, Ron, where it's back and forth, it's running the ball, it's great defense, these big penalties really hurt because exactly. it changes the field position of the game dramatically. So the big penalties in games like this really hurt. 
Now Jeff Bauer and company yet to beat a ranked opponent in 17 tries thanks to the penalty. That's a loss of about 17. Second and 27 with 55 seconds left to play in the first half. They keep it on the ground, a little conservative, and the fans getting a little restless, Artie. Roiland Bradley from Lamarck, Texas, coming up from that outside linebacker spot to make the stop. And Roberts will call a timeout. They have two left. Are you surprised they ran that football? Well, no, I, I just don't think they want to make a big mistake. If you hand the ball off, you can't get sacked. If you get sacked, you have a chance of losing the ball. Now, it was like a draw play in a trap. And wa watch the line play up inside. Watch old number 95, Rocky Bernard. He just decks the offensive guard on the trap. I, I think that Jeff Bauer felt he was going to catch A&M and maybe a blitz. And also, it's a good time to trap defensive linemen because they're not worried about the trap. Right. They're thinking about going to rush the passer. So, yes, I agree with the call. He's being conservative. Well, there's Dante Hall, supposedly injured, had a 44-yard touchdown run, though, and he did get the play, but you can see the just above that right knee. He's got both of them look like they're pretty wrapped up. But you're not going to see him return a punch or kickoff, Coach, I don't think, today. there's nothing wrong with that guy. He looks exactly. awful healthy to me. And he's, and he's thanking the right guys there. He's saying, guys, keep it up, keep going yeah. downfield, and I'll buy you a steak dinner when we get back. <laughs> Is that legal? <laughs> Yeah, for a, for a player <laughs> to buy another player it is, of course. Okay. You know and, what? And if I was Dante, I'd buy him all the steak they can eat. It's also legal for an analyst to buy the play-by-play -play guy steak dinner, too, I think. Yeah, I'll check. Thank you. No problem. 46 seconds. 46.7 to be exact. Roberts sees some pressure again. Has to dump it off. Brandon Francis up to the 45-yard line as the clock gets inside of 40. Warwick Holdman on the stop. But once again, every time we say Warwick Holdman, that wins also around the play. Yeah, well, both guys are extremely active. Very, very active. Now, what you're going to see here, watch the two safeties. Cody's 48, Jennings is 30. They're back, they're back. Look at this. He's looking, he sees the ball, he sees the ball. It's thrown. He comes up, he breaks on the ball. Now, get over there. Come on, you got to get going a little bit faster. But that's a good example of what a safety sees when he's backpedaling a little bit and playing zone. I like this guy. Oh, he is a tough, tough football player. What, what a great story. A walk-on came to Texas A&M. His father played for the Chicago Bears, and he said, I was also an underdog. I was an 11th round draft pick and made the team and also played, and that's Rich Cody. He came there as a 180-pounder, said, I still want to play for Texas A&M, and now he's over well over 200 pounds. Yeah, and he had two picks last week against Louisiana Tech. When I was at USC, I coached a guy by the name of Mark Carrier. He went on to play for the Bears and the Lions. He reminds me a lot of Carrier in the way he plays. Carrier was a highly recruited player, but they look very similar in terms of the way they play. Smart, big hitters, and the guy always does the right thing. Well, Southern Miss said we've got a game plan for when it's dry and when it rains. Well, they've used the dry game plan, but at the second half, we may have to pull out the wet game plan. There was about a 40% chance of showers today, but there's some tropical t depression named Zeke or something out there that we're supposed to feel. I'm not and to show you the te technology of coaching football today, they had a wet ball drill on Thursday at practice where they kept dunking the ball yeah. in a bucket of water and using it on the snaps, using it on the punts, and have the quarterback and the center exchange. So these coaches felt it was going to rain. That's why they had two game plans. Well, on fourth down and 20, 27 seconds left, the sixth punt of the afternoon for Jamie Purser, and the wind is really kicking up, and he's going to have to kick into the wind. A little bit low on the snap. Nobody back for Texas A&M. Down at the two-yard line, a 53-yard kick, and A&M only has to run out 17.2 seconds. We talked at the top of the show, RC talking about coming to Hattiesburg, knew it was going to be tough. Some of the most fun things, I think, in coaching is if you can go into one of those tough places and the, the crowd, uh, this is a big thing for them. They'll have probably the largest crowd they've ever had or certainly close to it. And uh, to come in and play when all everything's going against you, I, I think uh, you have a chance to build some character on the team early in the season, and uh, hopefully that'll be the experience we have today. Well, so far, he's had that experience today. He leads 14-0, a couple of field goals, a touchdown. Thanks to uh, a 44-yard run by Dante Hall. And boy, the wind is really whipping around now. Final.
final 15 seconds here in the first half. Now, if you're Jeff Bauer, Artie Gigantino, put your coaching hat on. What do you tell your team in intermission as they head to the locker room? Well, I go in and tell my football team they're playing one heck of a game. I get my offense and try to make some bigger plays. But I compliment this team and say, hey, you're laying your guts on the line. A turnover led to one field goal. A great run scored the other touchdown. So, I, if I were, I wouldn't be negative because it was such a negative experience last week up at Penn State. We're at halftime. The Aggies lead in the Golden Eagles 14-9. Nothing now. Let's send it to our college football Saturday studio with Kevin Frazier. Kevin, thanks a lot. Ron. Has to do, Kevin. Is they've got to get that running game of Texas A&M. They've got to shut it down. They, you know, they're they're missing DeAndre Hardeman, their leading rusher. Texas A&M is, but it doesn't seem to hurt them at all. Yeah, well, the rain has begun to fall down in Hattiesburg, so we'll have to see how that affects the game play. We're headed back to Hattiesburg when we return for more of the second half. You see, the umbrellas are out. The rain's falling. And now the skies have opened up. We're at halftime here in Hattiesburg, Mississippi, and Texas A&M leads 14 to nothing, along with Artie Gigantino, I'm Ron Thulin. Last week, the Golden Eagles, nine yards rushing against Penn State, 17 in the first half this afternoon, but give credit to A&M. They've just really put a damper on Sherrod Gideon. Yeah, they have, but what, what Southern Miss has got to do right now, Ron, is they've got to come out, and they've got to try to throw the football a little bit more. Now, here's an example of rolling up on Gideon, but watch Jay Brooks, number 26, come up and deck the receiver coming across the field. That's how you play great pass defense. Now, I talked about in the open what, what they were going to do against Gideon the receiver. Watch the two safeties here go back. Watch him roll up here, but also watch the blitz this time by Cornelius Anthony. He'll come up, he'll blitz. It's only a four-man rush, but you can see the safeties in the half. They're doing a wonderful job of having five guys underneath in the zone, and obviously Roberts has nowhere to throw because the receiver, Pinkston, was knocked down, but then he gets back up. Real good example of playing excellent pass defense. Well, A&M 5-0 against Southern Miss coming into this game. Only the fourth time Southern Miss has played host to a ranked team this decade. They're 0-3. And as we begin the second half, Southern Miss trails 14-0. to the 25-yard line. It is Brandon Francis, and that is where Southern Miss will begin play. We talked about it briefly in the first half, Artie, that Southern Miss had a game plan for dry weather, game plan for wet weather. How will those two differ right now? Well, you obviously can't do as much when it's raining outside, and I think what you do in the rain, and I think what the coaches were alluding to, is shorter passes, maybe more screens, to put the defense in jeopardy of slipping. You don't want to cause your own guys footing problems, Ron, by holding on to the ball too long and trying to throw the ball too deep and have the plays too exotic. So simplify. Nick's in motion. Roberts has a little bit of a blitz. Wings it out to Nick's and he gets up to about the 30-yard line. Pickup of five on the play. Well, the first half possessions for the Golden look like this. Well, a lot of punts and a fumble on yeah. there. Can't be real fired up. But you know what's ugly about that? One, two, three negative yardage on drives. That's that's not very good. Lee Roberts, not a very good first half throwing the football. And part of the reason, though, is those guys in the white oh, shirts. Yeah. They're, they're good on defense. Raymond Walls will now switch to the left side. Still raining, but right when we left you at halftime. Roberts, no pressure. Pass in the hands and out of the hands of Pink of Raymond Walls. Raymond Walls, one of the sure-handed uh, receivers of this Southern Miss team. He's a track guy in high school. 5'11", 179 pounds. And I tell you, Shaw and Walls had quite a battle in the spring. Gideon, you throw him in along with Pinkston, and those are four good receivers, but we haven't called their names a whole lot. Well, again, it's the coverage of Texas A&M. And like you said, I think Lee Roberts is a little off. He's out of rhythm, so to speak, in his passing game and his delivery. Usually above 50%, now under it on third down. Dumps it off, penalty flag is thrown. They get the first down with Brandon Francis, but right at the line of scrimmage again, it was a penalty flag thrown, and Southern Miss may have shot themselves in the foot Robert again. Has complete to Francis. There's a flag on the play. Let's look, look at all 22, and maybe we can pick out the infraction. Well, the first thing you're going to see is three down guys rushing. This is the nickel back. That's the dime back. You're going to see Texas A&M drop off into zone, and they literally have two guys deep, six guys underneath. It's a three-man rush. Roberts wants to throw the ball down the field. He can't find anybody. There's nobody down here for him to throw. 
so he's got to dump it off. Now watch the linebackers from Texas A&M react and rally up. Wow, is that pretty. Now, I'll tell you, that was close. I, I didn't see that uh, offensive lineman that far down. I'll tell you what, that, that was a generous call, I have to think. Third down and nine. Roberts straight drop, knocked down again. Ron Edwards gets the big hand on it. Cornelius Anthony. Roberts has bet it down by Now maybe Bradley. Well, he was playing the defensive end in that nickel. He's usually a linebacker, but they put him down in a three-point stance. And that's Mike Hankwood saying, nice job, guys, and I'm smiling. But, you know, it's Hank is a very conservative coach, Ron Thorne. He's a guy that's going to make you beat him with the short plays and the running game. He's not going to give up a big play deep. Purser set to kick it away. Chris Taylor is back. Kicking into a wind and rain, and it is a short kick. No return, goes out of bounds, about the 43-yard line. Let's see where the officials finally mark it. Maybe the 44, just about a 32-yard kick, and the Dixie Darlings get a little wet today. They still perform, did not bother them. Now, you know what, I hope they didn't spend too much money on their hairstyling because <laughs> it just got ruined. Well, here are the A&M possessions in the first uh, half. Well, you know, again, the one field goal was set up by great field position, but that is not overly impressive because the one touchdown drive right there was just a great individual effort from Dante Hall. First and 10 ball on the 44-yard line for Texas A&M. They're going to keep it on the ground with great success. Sir Parker just barreling over that left side, following behind that big offensive lineman. Let's take a look at that offensive line for Texas A&M. Well, you know, Sir Parker gives you something different, but watch these guys right here. Doing a nice job just getting a position by taking like a position step, sealing them off, and picking up the stunts from Southern Mississippi. And you know the front Thorne? They're not real aggressive about it. They kind of wait and allow the guys to come to them. And there's our guy. Dante Hall just sitting and waiting. Again, Parker. Gets the first down as he moves his way down to the 45-yard line of Southern Miss. You know, they may be short on experience at offensive line, but they're not short on talent. They're not short on talent, and as you mentioned before, they average around 300 pounds, and they like to play, and they play together. There's nothing more beautiful than a bunch of big 300-pounders yeah. playing together. Number 77, Seth McKinney, is the younger brother of Steve McKinney, who played at A&M for the last four years, who's now with the Saints. So there's a lot of good bloodline and a lot of good talent in that offensive line. Let's see if Stewart throws on first down. Hasn't done much of that today. They're going to keep it on the ground. This time, the black jerseys of Southern Miss, led by Ty Trahan, coming up to make the stop. Ray Dorr, the quarterback coach, and R.C. Slocum, the head coach, and Steve Craigthorpe, the offensive coordinator, are slowing this game down, Ron. Yeah. They're allowing the clock to start to churn away. They're taking their time going back to the huddle. They're taking their time coming to the line of scrimmage. They're trying to slow the tempo of this football game down. They know they'll, they'll take the victory, leave it here, because as you mentioned at the top of the show, it, it is a hornet's nest. So far, they haven't been stunned. Just a pickup of one second and nine. Southern Miss bringing five. Stewart has to hustle it up. Gets a complete to the tight end. Spiller, nice job getting away. Gets back to the line of scrimmage. Had negative yards, but the quarterback pressure by Cedric Scott, a sophomore out of Gulfport, Mississippi, forced him to uh, really kind of backtrack. Now watch Scott. He's number 96. He's going to come from the screen. No one blocks him. He just comes and he lays the wood to Brandon Stewart. It was not a blocking assignment error. They just allowed him to line up in air, and Stewart felt he could get rid of the ball before he sacked him. And there you see the finish of the play, and Derek Spiller and Campbell are the best set of tight ends in college football today. Third down. We're going to call it nine and a half. It's probably closer to ten. Stewart is grabbed, almost fumbled, holds on to the football. We've got a penalty flag thrown. It might be a face mask, Ron. Yeah, it was close. They were grabbing him, and Stewart ducked his head right as he started to lose the football. He lost almost 10 yards on the play. Adelius Thomas with the sack. No, it's, it's holding call against a and yeah, A face mask would have been a bad call there, but it was obviously a hold inside. And well, Jeff Bauer got exactly what he wanted to do on the first offensive series by AM. They stopped them. 
I've always felt in football, your first series in the third quarter sets the tempo and the momentum, or whatever you want to call it, for the rest of the game. And obviously, he's got to be happy now. Eddie Shaw set to get the kick. He had three for 32 yards. His longest was 17 in the first half. Leckler again back to punt. He's gotten off some dandies, and he does it again in bad weather. And this one will go into the end zone barely by about two yards. And we'll take a timeout with 11-11 left to play. Quarter number three, Texas A&M by two TDs over I Southern Miss. 3,000 is not. Very clever, partner. No pillow talk. That's great. <laughs> I, have, I, have I have no idea that what that means, though. But it sounded good at the time. Roberts straight drop to Gideon. Finally, he makes a reception. But he only picks up about four on the play. That win made the stop. Let's watch Gideon. They wanted to move him around a lot to get the right matchup. Why has have his part of it is because AM's playing so much zone. Now this is just a throw-out screen. He catches the ball, comes back inside, and tries to pick up some positive yardage. But the problem with a play like that is the AM defense pursues so well and they're so fast, you kind of run into defenders when you're cutting back against the brain, so to speak. So now the true sophomore defensive line did a nice job of holding that to just about a two and a half yard pickup. Gideon in motion, Roberts again straight back. Here comes the pressure up to the 25 to the 27 yard line before Rocky Bernard brings him down. Evan Perrone out of Houston, Texas also in on the action. Rocky Bernard is definitely the most active, I'd have to think, of all those defensive linemen for the Aggies. You know what I like about them all, though? They're all active. They were all young a year ago as freshmen, but R.C. Slocum and his staff went out and recruited seven defensive linemen a year ago. They got a little bit of a baptism playing as freshmen, but now for the next three years, they're going to be a really good group. Major third down play for the Golden Eagles. Woods in the backfield, three-step drop. Pass interference will be called. It was intended for Gideon. Brandon Jennings just got turned around, and R.C. Slocum doesn't like the call. Robert's pass intended for Gideon. There's a flag on the play. It looked like Brandon wasn't sure where everybody was. Well, <laughs> a little bit of confusion there, and R.C. says, hey, what's going on? It looked like pass interference from here, though, yeah. on. I think he may have said the ball was either uncatchable or nobody knew where the ball was. Well, that was a catchable ball, Coach. Yeah. Okay, you're going to see Gideon now go in motion up to the top here. It's going to come across. Now watch what happens up, up at the top. Roberts is going to look outside. He sees Gideon, and Brooks gets over. I think the ball was catchable, Ron Thulin. Yeah. I don't think Brooks, number 26, saw oh. the ball. Yeah. And, you know, hey, Brooks is a guy who's been throwing elbows all day. Yeah. So, you know, he got that extra shove in. First and 10 from the 35, and keep it on the ground. Some running room. Dwayne Woods crosses the 50 down to the 40-yard line. Rich Cody made the save. That is the first explosion we have seen offensively for Southern Miss this afternoon. And that's the kind of explosion that can give you some momentum. I would come back now on first down and maybe try to throw the ball downfield. Watch old Woods get up there. It's a simple draw. Blocking up front, a great job by Nolan, the tight end, the blocking, and good vision there by Woods. Great camera work by our guys of seeing the eyes of the running back through the eyes of a safety. A first and ten at the 42-yard line. This is probably the deepest Southern Miss has been today. Looks like an audible. Woods just tripped and fall. I think the 43-yard line reached up and grabbed him. It was an audible at the line of scrimmage that time by Roberts. Obviously, he felt A&M did not adjust to the wing set. They tried to run the football over there. Now, Woods, that long gain of 20-plus yards with four yards, and they got the whole first half. Roberts checking the plays on the arm. The rain has subsided considerably. Just a light, light drizzle right now. Gideon will come wide to the right on second down and 11. A little confusion in the A&M secondary and getting lined up. Pinkston comes into the slot. Roberts to Woods. Woods gets inside the 40, and he has hit hard. Our boy Dan Wood just stood him up. Celebrating his 23rd birthday next week. Already has graduated, working on his Masters. Okay, watch that win, number nine. He's going to drop back. It's his own defense. He sees the ball dumped outside. The ball gets turned back inside by Michael Jamison, number one. That win just makes the tackle. He's an active guy. You know, he reminds me.
me the kid from Texas Tech that's playing with the Dolphins, Zach Thomas. Right. It's a guy, Mike Singletary, the undersized guy that does everything right. And those numbers tell the story of that win. Third down and seven, Roberts lofts it up, going for the big one. Almost intercepted, is it? Yes, intercepted a and What a great defensive play by the Aggies. Brandon Jennings with his first interception of the year. A little too much air underneath. Now watch Brooks. He's going to go. He's got Gideon covered. He sees the ball. The ball is a little underthrown, which is why he comes back. But that great leaping ability of Jay Brooks goes up, and he volleyballs it to number 30. Now you're going to see it up top. Now watch, watch um, Jennings come out of nowhere here. This is what we had talked about before. You're going to see him. He sees the ball thrown. Brooks has got great cover. That might have been a touchdown, Ron yeah. Fulwin, if the ball had a little more air under it. I agree. Thomas on a quick rush, tripped up behind the line of scrimmage into Sir Parker. That win getting a little medical attention to the mouth. As hard as he plays, you're surprised he's not banged up more. This is a young man, I think a lot of people have heard the incredible story of 23 years ago. His mom escaped from Vietnam. She was four months pregnant with dad at the time. Ended up in Thailand, an American family sponsored him, moved to the United States, Arkansas, Kalamazoo, and now he's an All-American linebacker. But you know, he's an All-American on and off the field. Big time. Slipping and falling, no place to go, Sir Parker. Now this is an interesting situation here because if I'm Jeff Brewer, I want to go block this punt if we stop him now, Ron, on third mm -hmm. down here because look at the great field position you're going to get if you're Southern Miss. And so far in the second half, Southern Miss has gotten the positive field position. Well, Jeff Bauer was looking for leadership on his defense. They told us yesterday that they still haven't found the guy to come up with a big play. They need to find that guy right now at third and 13. Watch the movement of Slaughter and the guys. They move around, they go blitz, and it's perfect. Slaughter just takes the gap and upends it. Penetration stops the running game, and that was a great example of it. They're going to come after the punt here, Ron. Leckler, over 50-yard average so far today, and this is going to be well short of that unless he gets a good bounce. Eddie Shaw's going to let it bounce. He had a chance at returning it, but why take the chance when you're going to get good field position? A 58-yard kick by Leckler, and for the sixth time, he may average over 50 yards for a ball game. We'll be back. Left to play in the third quarter, a 14-0 lead by the Aggies, and Jeff Bauer wanted to find out today who would be their leader on defense, because that was a major question coming into this afternoon. We had a quality group of seniors, and I think this group of seniors is, is a quality group, too. We're just we're waiting on somebody, to, and I think we've got some, some leaders on, the, on this defense, but somebody's got to step up. I think you've got to make plays, you know, and, and get some confidence in yourself before you can step up. So, uh, hey, we we got to go to work and make some plays, and then, you know, that you get a little emotion from making plays and people stepping up when they are playing well, and that's what we're waiting on. Well, you have to take advantage of those plays. Let's see if the Southern Miss offense can do that. And on this play, they're not going to. Brandon Francis wrapped up, and he is going to be pushed back for about a three-yard loss. You know, he was talking about leadership. I think it's one of the toughest things in all of athletics to define. Because sometimes leadership means talking and yelling and being, quote, a cheerleader. I always felt you can't make a leader. I think you're either born a leader, and if you're not a vocal guy, talk with your pads, like Coach was talking about. So I think it's a real complicated subject. But I always would rather have a guy that played big as opposed to talk big. 5.29 on second and 15. Loss of five on the play. Here comes AM. They're bringing a bunch of white jerseys. Pass is intercepted. Jason Webster to the 40. 30. Lee Roberts finally makes the tackle. That ball was in the hands and right out, and Jason Webster got an early Christmas present. 
Harrison and a 30-yard return. But it all started with guys coming right up the middle again. Well, you're going to see that win come inside and run that blitz that they've been running all day long. You're going to see Anthony, number 46, come around. He throws the ball to Pinkston. Pinkston's got to catch it. But A&M is sitting in a zone behind it, and the ball gets tipped up the Webster. Good team defense there. That is the way you play in the secondary, the much maligned secondary of A&M two years ago. That is just power football. Run that ball right up the middle. There's Jason Webster. You know, Marty, you look back at AM's defense in a couple of years ago, their secondary was just this side of awful. Next, last year, they did a great job, eighth in pass efficiency. They've really improved. Well, they were young players then. And, you know, you, Mike Hankowitz came in, a different style of defense, a little bit more zone. When you play zone defense, you have a tendency to intercept more passes. It's hard to intercept passes when you're playing man-to-man. -man. Second and one after a pickup of nine. Dante Hall back into the lineup. He's got a 44-yard TD, and he's got this one from 16. he's going to play. We know he's played two plays, a 16-yard touchdown and a 44-yard touchdown. Boy, is he explosive. He's very, very hard to tackle. I was at one of their practices a year ago, and R.C. Slocum kept talking to me about this guy and saying, he kept saying, Artie, he's like Mike Garrett and some of those little backs that used to play in the National Football League. He's a guy that's very hard to tackle. A Barry Sanders guy. A guy with a low center of gravity that's got unbelievable balance. Russell Bynum's extra point is good. And with 4.29 left to play in quarter number three, the Aggies have taken control. They lead 21-0. What's interesting about him, and we'll see it here in a minute, how many people miss him and how many tackles he breaks. Brandon Francis, no place to go. He'll have to sit down, and the Golden Eagles will take over first and 10 from their own 20-yard line. Now let's step aside, send it to our college football Saturday studio with the game break. You know, they're not winning, but I think they're a competitive football team because that UCLA team is a great team. Roberts' pass is complete. They get a first down up to Eddie Shaw, and there's going to be a penalty flag, a little extracurricular once he crosses the line. Now that's the second one today. Now, R.C. Slocum is not going to like that because those really kill you and, like I said, damage field position in close big games. Now we'll listen in. 414, I think, if you're Jeff Bauer, you need to get something. Hit ball, personal foul, late hit, out of bounds, first down. We'd like to welcome all of you from Sports South after watching the Georgia-Wyoming game, which the Bulldogs won at 16-9. Welcome to Hattiesburg, Mississippi, along with Artie Gigantino. I'm Ron Thulin. 21 nothing's our score. Texas A&M leading the Golden Eagles of Southern Miss. First half, a defensive battle under the sun, and in the rain here in the second half. Oh, my. Golden go pulse were ahead for Jay Brooks. Couldn't pull it down. It has been A&M's defense this afternoon that has, that has set up a number of scoring opportunities for the Aggies. You know, Ron Thule, what I'm really impressed with with the secondary from Texas A&M, they anticipate the ball. They do a great job of seeing the ball released, breaking on the ball, and getting their hands on it. Second down and 10. An important series for Southern Miss. Not much running room for Kelby Nance, the sophomore from Hattiesburg, Mississippi. Had two carries for four yards against Penn State, his first carry this afternoon. Had a great spring. He really was the only player returning in the backfield that had ever carried a ball for Southern Miss. Well, that's why they ended up moving wide receiver Brandon Francis to the offense. But I'm not sure who, who it matters who's carrying the ball today yeah. because of that wrecking crew defense. Another third down possibility. Another third down conversion possibility for Southern Miss. Third and 11. Three-man rush, still pressure. Roberts loses the handle, a and fights for it, but I think Southern Miss got it back. You're only rushing three guys, and the line of Southern Miss could do nothing about it. 
Chris Terry from Baytown, Texas, is the one who really put the pressure on. And that was a covered sack that time. Roberts had really nowhere to throw. You're going to see him. He gets the ball in the shotgun. He's got plenty of time. But the receivers have been blanketed by the secondary of Texas A&M. And the other thing that's going on right now, and you hear some new names, that the A&M defensive line is starting to rotate fresh people in the game, Ron Thulin, so that they can rush the passer better. Jamie Purser averaging just over 42 yards a kick. His leg's going to be sore tomorrow. Fair catch is going to be called right at the 20-yard line. A 46-yard kick, zero on the return. That kind of reminds me of Hayden a little bit. Kind of a sly guy, not a real flashy guy, but a sound, solid, really football coach. Just continuing with their strength. They don't need to throw the football now because their running game is very, very successful. Dante Hall continuing to get playing time. You know, when you talk to AM and I think RC Slocum, he gives an awful lot of credit to Emery Ballard and what he meant to him in his. Well, Emory Bard was one of the great coaches way back when, 20 years ago. RC's had the, uh, you know, a great background of being around the Jackie Sherrills, the, the Bullards, the Artie Gigantino. Cal, John Robinson, he's been around some coaches. Seriously, those head coaches are really outstanding. Hall dancing and prancing up to the 25-yard line, and he has a couple of TDs today. Let's take a look. This is his first. From 44 yards out. And how many tackles did Southern miss? Miss. And touchdown number two from 16. One hit, two, six carries, 80 yards for that young man. And nine missed tackles on those two runs alone. Brandon Stewart's going to take a seat on third down and six. That'll force AM to punt it away. You know, defensive coaches yell at players when they miss tackles, but part of it's because the guy they're trying to tackle is really, really good. So it's 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 half and half. It's a good player carrying the football and also bad form or technique, whatever you want to call it, in tackling. Tell you, you can't say enough about this Southern Miss defense. They have played a whale of a game despite the fact they're down 21 nothing. Nice defensive series there. Again, Leckler, still over 50-yard average. Eddie Shaw at the 30. Makes his way to the 43-yard line, a 47-yard kick, 14 on the return, and that's where the Golden Eagles will try to get something going inside of 45 here in the third. You know, you're talking about Leckler. Southern Miss used to have the greatest punter in the history of the National Football League who went to, the goes, went to school here, a guy by the name of Ray Guy. Yes, he had a 93-yard punt once in against Ole Miss one year. Obviously drafted in the first round by the Oakland Raiders, now in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. I mean, the guy was an amazing weapon for Al Davis's teams. Gideon wide right, but they're going to keep it on the ground. Barreling over that left side, crossing the 45 to the 46-yard line. You know, it's interesting, a little trivia. Now, Southern Miss has got arguably the best quarterback in the National Football League, at least in the 90s, and the best punter in the history of pro football are from Southern Miss. And Brett Favre, is who we're speaking about, he still lives here in Hattiesburg. He even has a Brett Favre challenge that he donates money for every touchdown pass he throws in the NFL. And he's got a lot to donate. He's a legend in Hattiesburg, <laughs> folks. And a rich legend. Yeah. A little draw play to Dwayne Woods. And he makes it up to maybe the 48-yard line. Well short of the first down. That win again on the tackle. How do you like this guy who averages over 10 tackles a football game? You know, one advantage he has, and it's not taking anything away from him, he plays in a conference that runs the football. And he does it well, stopping that run. That's the end of the third quarter. 15 minutes left to play. Southern Miss has an uphill battle. Do they have the strength to beat AM? We'll find out. Coming your way from a wet Hattiesburg, Mississippi. Third down and five. Roberts knocked down again. Warwick Holman just got the big hands up. 
I'll tell you, A&M's defense already, uh, the people in the Big 12 have to be impressed with this because they have done everything. They're secondary, they're linebackers, they've stopped the run. It's been a complete performance. You know, they're sound, and they've got a lot of good players. I don't think they've got a lot of great players. Right. They've got a lot of really good football players that play well together. That win gets all the publicity, but this is almost a no-name defense, kind of like the, the old Miami Dolphins defense with Bill Orangeberger. A bunch of guys that are good football players that play really well together. Well, Jamie Purser has had a nice afternoon punting the football. He's had enough opportunities to do that. Chris Taylor, standing at the 10, falls forward to the 8. 39 yards on the punt, none on the return, and the Aggies will take over again. Well, it's hardcore football on Fox Sports, the hardcore crew. Because it has been their core. I mean, they right smack in the middle. The young defensive line has played well. And they'll just hand it off to Dante Hall on the left side. You know, we haven't talked a whole lot about Brandon Stewart today, but I think this is one of the interesting stories. And, and the story of a young man, as we have a penalty flag thrown, of a young man that was much maligned back in uh, the early days of Texas A&M. They came in with all the hoopla, Peyton Manning's backup, all that. Did not play well, fought his way through it. We asked him last night, do you want to forget those bad times? And he said, absolutely not. Well, you grow from adversity, and you know, but one of the things that I think maybe slowed him down when you're splitting time with a two quarterback system, you don't really have an opportunity, Ron, to take control of the football team. And you know, let's face it, AM has done a good job on the defense, automatic first down. AM's done, done a good job on offense through the last couple years, you know, the RC Slocum era, but they're not known as an offensive school. You know, I don't think the best quarterback in the country is going to come to Texas A&M that's built on defense here. So, you know, great quarterback to engineer this offense. It is Dante Hall, spins around, loses the football. Is he down? Yes. They're saying it was not a fumble. Larry Watts was right in the middle of things. And I tell you, that was awfully close to a fumble. It looked like he started to bobble it when he spun it. I'm not sure if the ground caused the fumble. Jeff Bauer didn't like the call. Let's take a look. I think it was a fumble. Well, this is called run support by Watts. He makes the tackle. As Dante oh goes my. down, that is clearly a fumble, Ron Thorne. The officials mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. missed that one. Yeah, I thought I saw the ball pop out. Second down and 17. Up to the 30, penalty flag is thrown. Eric Bernard, who was also not expected to play, he thought he'd play before Hallwood. He's in the ballgame now. And the Aggies will be pushed back a little bit. Well, I think R.C. Slocum has to have a little smile on his face now that Bernard and Hall are both playing at a ball game. And last night, it was it was pretty much doom and gloom at the hotel, wasn't it? I mean, <laughs> well, I'd be doomed and gloom too. Yeah. My best two running backs weren't going to play, and you know, so much of this game, at least coming in, was built around A&M running the football at Southern Miss. So that's why I think he was a little edgy last night. But. The one ace in his back pocket, he had two of them. He has a great punter, which controls the field position, but also he's got an outstanding defense. And, you know, he was the defensive coordinator here for Jackie Sherrill prior to becoming the head coach. And I think, like on the other side of the field, he is also a wonderful fit at Texas A&M. They love him. Oh, yeah. He loves A&M. But a little bit sad for him. His son, Sean Slocum, who was on the staff last year, now part of the Southern Cal staff with Paul Hackett, and said last night, he goes, I miss him. Well, but it's good for Sean to go out there and experience the Pac-10 and kind of get away right. from the A&M roots, because even though he was a full-time coach, he was always RC. Now he gets a chance to go out and make it on his own, and he's really a talented young coach. Third and 12 for Brandon Stewart and company. Slips and falls. And he will be dropped for a loss. Let's send it to our College Football Saturday studios for a game break. Guys, a big SEC Western Division matchup. Seventh ranked LSU. Time on the interception. Man, Leckler has got a lead foot. He launches that one. No return. How about another 53-yarder by Shane Leckler? The junior from East Bernard, Texas, averaging over 50 yards a kick this afternoon, and he has always kept Southern Miss with their back to the wall, and the Golden Eagles trail by three touchdowns. He'll be a first-round draft 
Troy Sunberg. How valuable is he? Southern Miss on the ground up to the 30 to the 32 yard line. It is Dwayne Woods, the young redshirt freshman, getting some much needed playing time, and he's taking advantage of it, showing the coaches he does have some speed. Closing in on 12 minutes to play in the ball game. Sherrod Gideon, the big wide receiver, has been held pretty much in check by this AM defense. And so is the crowd. The crowd's kind of yeah. gotten quiet, but you now that's what happens when you get behind 14, 21 points. Two wide receivers to the right. The ball is loose again, and AM, I think, recovered it. Another miscue by Southern Miss. One fumble led to a field goal. An interception led to a touchdown, and Cornelius Anthony comes up with that fumble from his linebacker spot. Well, you're going to see Roberts get the ball. He's going to go back. He goes to hand it off, but he does it kind of casually, Ron, mm -hmm. and he puts the ball on the hip of the tailback. He can't do that. He always looked like he was a little casual on that. Well, you got to handle the ball properly. That is so disappointing for this ball club, having the two weeks to prepare for it and come up with mistakes the way they have today. Second down, or first down and 10 for the Aggies at the 26. And we have Randy McCowan has checked into the ball game at quarterback, the junior out of Jacksonville, Texas. Interesting story, McCowan and Stewart, of course, alternating last year. And Artie, I think you and I had a couple of their games. Neither quarterback thought there was a quarterback controversy. They enjoyed going ahead and playing with each other like that. Well, I think the coaching staff did a wonderful job of handling that and not allowing it to become a controversy. And I thought what they did, they were honest with them. They said, hey, you'll play Randy, you'll play 15 plays. Brandon, you'll play 15 plays. And it worked out perfectly. They were situational quarterbacks a lot last year. Here is McCown on the run. Pass is complete to the tight end, Derek Spiller. And you saw the power of the big 6'3", 257-pound senior. Derek Spiller. You know, when he was at Tennessee, Here's who he was joined by. How about Peyton Manning and a guy named Todd Helton now plays for the Colorado Rockies and a legitimate Rookie of the Year con uh, person for the uh, Major League Baseball. I want to know who was recruiting quarterbacks at Tennessee that year. I'm going to go out and hire that guy because he had obviously an eye for talent. Third down and three. Ball's on the 19-yard line. They keep it on the ground. That'll be close to the first down. Eric Bernard stopped by T.J. Slaughter. And it is a first down. You know, this is typical A&M offense. Watch big old Hamuli here. He's going to pull and lead up inside. That's about 330 pounds coming around on a power play. You got to like that if you're the offensive line coach from Texas A&M. Samisi Hamuli, the first Tongan to play for Texas A&M out of Euless, Texas, just outside of Dallas. First and 10 on the 16. McCowan is going to be dumped back at the 27-yard line. Adelius Thomas from a quality Alabama. Haven't called his name a whole lot of times, but that's his second sack of the afternoon. Been a little bit quiet, but I'll tell you, they've run away from him. Here he comes off the corner. It's a bootleg. He does not get fooled and goes to the backfield and makes the play. They did not block him intentionally because they felt he would bite on the play fake. Now the coaches would love to see him become a bigger, big playmaker. I liked him. When we, oh, when we yeah. talked to him yesterday, I thought he was really a mature young man who really had a focus on what he wanted to do. Plus, he's a great-looking athlete. Loss of nine, second and 19. This time, the black jerseys just corralling Eric Bernard, the junior out of Tulsa, Bernard Oklahoma. The 21. 1997, that young man tore his ACL. Before that, in 1996, he rushed for over 500 yards, and everybody wondered if he'd come back from that ACL. Well, you lose a step. I don't care who you are when you have injuries like that, and I think he has lost a step, but he still can be a productive football player in this offense. There's Chris Taylor on the sideline, a wide receiver, with nine and a half to play in the ballgame. Jamar Toombs is the fullback behind Randy McCown as the ring kicks up again. McCowan looking down to the 13-yard line. The pass is complete to Chris Cole. Inside the 10. Well, tomorrow on Fox.
Cinefil Sunday is spotted at about the 17, 18 yard line, 28 yard attempt. And it is good. Everything has gone right for Texas A&M this afternoon. Officially a 27-yard field goal and with 9-13 left to be played in the ballgame, the Aggies are pitching a shutout against Southern Miss. More football coming your way. and i kicks it away. Brandon Francis at the goal line, right up the middle between the wedge. Penalty flag is thrown at the 30 and at the 20. You know, Kevin was so right. Arizona is one of the most improved teams in the country. Great talent. And finally, they've got a quarterback playing well for them. So I think they're going to do some damage in that Pac-10 race. 9.03 to play in the ballgame. Well, the fans, 33,000 plus. They were expecting one of their largest crowds ever. All beginning to leave. Boy, we've got an assortment of things. We're going to try the whole thing again. Here, here's what happens. Now, this is called a wedge. The guy's in front of the kick returner. It's like a wall. Look what they're doing. But watch what happens here. You can't do that. That's illegal because it's dangerous. They changed the rule. If you're a wedge breaker, Ron Thulin, you've got to stay up above the waist of the wedge man. If you go down like that and try to knock him down like a bowling ball, it's illegal. That was the call against Texas A&M. Well, somebody could get hurt. You know what? That was a pretty looking wedge. That was good. Good looking. Just just broke down, unfortunately. We're going to kick it again after the offsetting penalties. Offsetting penalties. And our degree game summary, Dante Hall, eight carries 76 yards and two touchdowns. A very productive afternoon. Bynum with the three field goals. And you can see the total yards, 166 to just 97 for Southern Miss. That's a quarter for some teams. Yeah. That's amazing. But again, I think you got to tip your hat to the defensive play here today. Well, they'll try the whole thing again. Francis once again standing at about the two-yard line. Backs up to the goal line, and that's where he'll bring it out from. The wedge is there again. This time, Francis follows it up to the 30-yard line. That's where Southern Miss will begin first and 10. Let's take a look at that one more time. You know, Ron, that just tells me these guys are coached well. Watch these guys form a wall. Look at that. That's absolutely beautiful. They're even holding Obviously, create a hole. That's excellent, excellent special teams coaching. You know, last year, Southern Miss finished number 19 in the country. They were just uh, the only team in the top 25 to play fewer than six home games. Only played four. They're only playing five this year. And after this play, I want to get Artie Gigantino to comment on that. With 8.50 to play, first and 10, ball on the 30. Robert straight drop. Dumps it off into the flat as he takes a shot to the mouth. This year they're playing five home games. Can you be a top 25 team and consistently only play four and five home games? No, you got to get people in here. You've got to get people to come to here and play you on your campus. You got to raise the level. The problem that they run into, the stadium only holds 35,000 people. So a lot of bigger schools, quote, don't want to come in here and play. And again, you know, A&M is going to play Southern Mississippi three times yep. after this game, but all three are going to be over at College Station. So, you know, to raise the level and to be nationally exposed, I think you got to win at home. Roberts' pass is complete to Raymond Walls. How about over the last 30 years, they've averaged under four home games a year, and here's their schedule for 1998. And, you know, you see they play a good schedule. They go and play at Alabama on the 31st of October. They've already played Penn State. They've played Texas A&M. Tulane will be a great game for Conference USA. So they play a very competitive schedule. But you got to get people like the A&Ms and the Nebraskas and those people, if yep. you can, to come here and play at Southern Miss. Because to me, Ron, that's the foundation of your football program yep. when you win at home. Now they probably do more with less than any other team in Division 1A. 7.40 to play. Roberts over the middle. Pass is kicked off again. That's the third interception today that's been the result of a tip. Roberts threw only nine interceptions all last year. He has thrown three this afternoon. Cedric Curry, the junior from Houston, Texas, with his first pick of the day. 
Uh, you're going to see the ball tip. Now, Roberts looks down the field. He gets a little bit confused, but one of those defensive linemen gets his hand up and knocks it down. Watch this now. He's going to look down the field. Takes the ball, drops back, good zone drop underneath by the linebackers. The ball gets tipped and right up to number 18. Right there, Curry, good job. Randy McCowan keeps it on the ground. Handing off to Bernus Rhodes, the sophomore from Terrell, Texas. I, I, I know I said this before, but I, I want to make the point again, Ron, is that when you play zone defense 99% of the time, your interception rate is going to be much higher than man-to-man -man because you see the ball throw. And then when the ball gets tipped, like we've seen three mm -hmm. times today, you have defenders going to the ball to catch it because when you're playing man-to-man, -man, nobody's looking at the ball. Right. They're looking at the guy they're supposed to cover. One in the backfield. McCowan slips as he drops back. He is going to be dropped. Tries to get back to the line of scrimmage. Darian Brutley, the 5'11 redshirt freshman, coming up from that corner that spot to make the stop. Brutley, one of the young redshirt freshmen, getting some playing time this afternoon for Jeff Bauer. Boy, this AM defense, though, they have set up so much for the offense. Look at, look at who they've gone up against, too, the last three weeks. That's, you and I saw Troy Edwards against Nebraska. You know how good Warwick is. We knew how good Gideon is. They put the clamps on everyone. But what Mike Hankowitz, the defensive coordinator, and R.C. Slocum make you do, they try to make you beat them left-handed. They take away what you do well first, and then they implement their defensive game plan from there. Rhodes on the carry. Leo or Larry Watts comes up to make the stop. The senior out of Columbia, Mississippi. Here's what they've done to some of the leading receivers in the NCAA. You know, I only saw Warwick on television, but we saw this guy right here in person against Nebraska, and he had a monster day over 400 oh. yards. But part of it is scheme, though. Zone defenses can take away the great receiver by doubling him a little bit, but also rattling him at the line of scrimmage. Leckler's punt. Off the side of his foot will go out of bounds at about the 12-yard line. And with 5.36 to play in the ballgame, and I'm leading 24-0. Dante Hall is resting, and for good reason. In the ballgame is Texas A&M has the lead 24-0 over the Golden Eagles of Southern Miss. I'd like to thank uh, Regal Napier, the SID here at Southern Miss, and his assistant Ricky Hazel, and also our good friend Alan Cannon, old AC at Texas A&M. Gentlemen, thank you for making our job so easy this afternoon. Showed some real southern hospitality to us the last three days. Now well, Southern Miss just going to keep it on the ground. Some diehard fans. Crowd has been cut about in half thanks to the rain that began at intermission. You know, we, we talked to the Texas A&M coaches. We saw it on the game film that they like to throw on first down. They were rolling out Brandon Stewart. They wanted to throw deep this year. We really haven't seen it this, uh, today. What happened, the Southern Miss defense talked them out of that. R.C. Slocum and Ray Dorr and Steve Craigthorpe didn't want to give up a big play on first down by allowing a defender to penetrate or an assignment error in the offensive line. So they went back to trying to run the ball a little bit more on first down. But I think it's because of what Southern Mississippi and the complexity of what they do on defense that talked them out of it. And that happens to coaches all the time. They say, hey, I don't want to put my kids in that situation. Well, Southern Miss still has the conference to look forward to. They're picked to win Conference USA this year. That'll be their third consecutive crown. Their big date is October 3rd when they take on Tulane. Well, you know, Southern Miss is one of two teams from Conference USA that went to bowl games last year. Yep. So I think it's a great conference. There's a lot of good coaches and good football teams in that conference. A lot of movement. I think the stat that I'm so impressed with as far as their conference play, as Southern Miss were talking about, in the previous two years, only Houston has beaten them. They've only lost one conference game, and that was in overtime. <laughs> yeah, That's not too shabby. You mean they're dominating the conference? Yeah. <laughs> you know, well, you know what's great, though? I mean, Pittsburgh had a good team last year, and they went to the Liberty Bowl and just walled Pitt. So, you know. And, and the other thing, Ron, in the last two years, there's been 28 players from Conference USA that have been taken in the NFL draft. And it's only getting better. Now, this guy in the Big 12, Big 12 is also an excellent oh. conference. It's much more, though, of a First running down, conference down. than the Pac-10 and the Big 10 in the Southeast, who live and die a little bit more by the pass. First and 10 for Southern Miss. Ball at the 41-yard line. Roberts, first time this 
afternoon with some time and again in and out of a receiver's hands. How many times have we seen that this afternoon? Well, I think part of it's Robert due to the weather here, Ron. Right the ball is obviously a little bit slippery. Second half, Southern Bits. You're going to see Roberts get out. He finds his receiver. He delivers the football, but it goes right through the normally sure-handed Brandon Francis. Now, Francis is a team guy. Here's a guy that two years ago was a running back. The coaches said, would you play wide receiver for one year? He moved out to wide receiver for 1997 and then came back and played running back this year. He's a wonderful example of a team player. On second down at 10, Roberts feels some pressure. This pass is complete to Derek Nix. A first down for the Golden Eagles of Southern Miss. We still have a lot of football coming your way on Fox Sports Net. Immediately following our contest, we'll take you out west, North Carolina, at Stanford. Barry Tompkins, Tom Ramsey, and our partner, Eric Clemens. Big EC had to go to Palo Alto. Tough job, eh? And that game is coming up immediately following this contest. Full day of football here on Fox Sports Net. We're glad you're spending your Saturday afternoon with us. I'm telling we could take us all on a trip at the end of the season. Oh, he's that. buying dinner next week. <laughs> he and Kevin Frazier, they're buying us dinner. Robert swings it out to the right side. The pass is complete to Francis. Robert's pass is complete to Francis. To the Texas A&M 40-yard line. Clock ticking away. Four minutes left to play in the ballgame. A&M defense, boy, they just have such team speed, and that is what concerns Southern Miss the most. And it, and it ought to concern a lot of the opponents in the Big 12. You look at this, three interceptions, two sacks, 135 yards. And the field position is not yeah. told in those statistics. So That's a great point. The wrecking crew is back, so to speak. Not that it ever left. Another pass is complete. This one to Todd Pinkston. I tell you, you and I have a date circle because we know it's going to be a barn burner October 10th. When they play the Nebraska. Now, R.C. Slocum, I, I, I'm not sure we should talk about this on the air, but hey, what the heck, we'll let the secret out. That's going to be a maroon day at, at Texas A&M because, hey, they don't want a bunch of people from Nebraska coming in with the red. So R.C. <laughs> has got that baby circled right there, and he's selling maroon. You can't wear white. You can't wear red. you got to wear maroon because that would be a huge game, and you talk about electrical atmosphere. Wow. On third and one for the Golden Eagles. Second effort, and they got the first down. I tell you, and, and unfortunately, Kyle uh, Field this year, they had to cut the attendance down from 70 plus down to about 57, 58 because of construction. So that is going to be the hottest ticket in South Texas. Yeah, well, they're like Nebraska. They're, they're adding on to their stadium, and it's going to be 80,000, and it's going to be just absolutely beautiful when it's done. First down and 10, 235. This is a fried drive for Southern Miss. Straight drop, scrambles again, has some running room. Pulls the trigger, pass is complete to the 20, to Todd Pinkston. Good looking play by Roberts. Good scrambling by Roberts. Yeah. You know, he's running around, it's a little slippery on the field. Did a good job, again, of keeping his poise and getting outside. You know, Roberts is a guy who's known for his intelligence, not his speed. But his speed is deceptive. He can just give you that little fake inside, but he can throw the football on the run. His speed is deceptive, Ron Thorne. Pickup of 17 on the play, and with 125 seconds left, Roberts trying to get that goose egg off the scoreboard. A&M brings a lot of people. Roberts over the middle. The pass is complete. Great catch by Todd Pinkston again. Where was this in the first three quarters? Well, I talked about that at halftime. Yeah. I mean, you got to come out. Okay, they, they tried to run it in the first half. I thought that was right, but you got to try to throw it and make some big plays so you can move the chains. Now, the executive producers of Fox Sports Net are Arthur Smith and Bill Borson. Coordinating producer of College Football Saturday is Roy Hamilton. Today's game produced by Mike Helling, directed by Ken Fouts. And the vice president of field operations is Andrea Jenkins. Second and two, ball is on the 12-yard line. And I would love to add a shutout to their schedule this year. Roberts throws it away. Smart play by the senior quarterback. 
You know, because you look at the interceptions he's thrown today. I mean, they've been three tips, as I talked right. about. It wasn't like he hit the safety right in the numbers, you know, when he threw the interception. So he's had some bad luck today in terms of how the football has bounced. Second team All-Conference USA last year, picked in the same spot this season. Southern Miss, Ron, can't get down mentally after right. this game. you got to go play the next nine games and still try to win the conference and go to another bowl game this year. Texas A&M had 12 guys on the field, so they have to call a timeout. There was a lot of switching around, a lot of the big guys on the defensive line running in and out. And they did have 12, and instead of getting the penalty, took the timeout. Well, I guess it's time to talk about it. You know, they always talk about the 12th man yeah. in the stands at Texas A&M. That's right. Now, you know, you were talking before about home field advantage. Mm -hmm. Now, R.C. Slocum wants to play seven or eight games a year oh. if he can at home, like Nebraska does. Frank Solich told us that's why he had that extra game against Louisiana Tech this year because he wanted his young players to get the feeling of playing and winning at home, just like this guy. You know, he's the best unknown coach in the country. He's fifth, fifth in terms of winning percentage of active coaches in the country today. But I think sometimes because he's not a flashy guy that doesn't draw attention to himself, a lot of people don't know him. Everybody in Texas knows RC because he's a good guy. But I'm telling you, this guy is one of the best football coaches. And he's got an excellent staff. That's why they have a great football program at AM. Well, everybody knows that guy. That's Dante Hall and Mike Hankowitz, Hankowitz. the defensive coordinator. And what signal is this? He's saying, stay back, come on a blitz, and if you miss the tackle, don't come over to the bench. What's he talking about there? Uh, defensive signals are crazy. Now he folds his hands. He's going to tell him something. He's going to change his mind. What are you guys doing? Hank is a good football coach. Coached at Colorado for a long time. Was a player at the University of Michigan and is one of the most sound defensive coaches there is. Third down and two with 1.13 to play in the ball game. The Aggie faithful are standing. They want the shutout. Roberts, look out. Scrambling into the end zone. Another tip pass. Should have been caught again. And a and also came up with an almost came up with another interception. Kevin Hurd, the senior from West Point, Mississippi, right in the backyard of Mississippi State, was the intended receiver. Again, Roberts is doing a good job of escaping danger. He's keeping the football alive. He gets outside and throws the ball on the move. And that's a good job. Rich Cody it may yeah. have it may have got yeah, he might have got his fingers left. Pointing finger, I think he got on that football. Fourth down and two, and Southern Miss going to go for it. Here comes everybody for AM. Pass is complete down to the five yard line. And they stay in bounds. Once again, Todd Pinkston, who's come alive here in the final few minutes. Don't worry about your hair. There's nothing you can do with it. <laughs> Forget about it. She, she kept dry, but uh, yeah, really. she needed a pillow to put on top of her head. It's that moose look working today. <laughs> Mike Hankowitz and R.C. Slocum don't want Southern Miss to score here because you don't want to get on the airplane with a bad taste in your mouth that the last thing that happened on the field was a touchdown. Well, we've got their coaches right to our left, and we can see them through the glass. I'm telling you, they are going at it down there. They're, they're still coaching. Well, our keys to the game for Texas A&M, as we mentioned at the top of the show, let's get our grade on them, Marty. I think they did a great job of blocking the uh, Southern Mississippi fronts. They did not try to catch or throw any long passing plays. They definitely controlled Gideon, but I think the best thing they've done today is right there. They kept their composure early in the game. Didn't let this crowd affect Not a bit. Crowd was never a factor early in that first, I think in the first quarter and a half they probably would, but that man right there doesn't let anything affect him. I, tell you, I like him. I would have loved to have coached a guy like that because he's everything you ask a student athlete to be on and off the field. Except for doing a bad job, a job there of mugging for the camera. Yeah, he's got, he's got to work on that. Shun Horn and Cornelius Anthony <laughs> joining him. And, but we asked him last night about all the accolades. He said, listen, I'm nothing. It's the rest of the guys that make me good. And, he, and we believe him because he's such a sincere young man. Absolutely. First and goal from the sixth, the final 59 seconds for Southern Miss. Roberts into the end zone. Touchdown, Southern Miss. Gideon with the touchdown reception, his first of the year. There's Mike Hankowitz, not very happy. 
happy about it. And oh, by the way, touchdown. They had one against Penn State, and apparently they'll have one against Texas A&M, and usually that's reserved for Texas A&M guys to do the push-ups. Here's an interesting formation on the extra point attempt. Now they're all coming together. A little swinging gate, and if the defense yep. doesn't get lined up, then they run a trick play. They worked on that for about 20 minutes yesterday, on Thursday, we should say, in practice. You know what the problem with those things? I think they're nice, they draw up, and they're fun, but they take too much time, yep. which is what happened here. They're getting a delay of game penalty. We saw it work in the Oklahoma State-Missouri game, I think it was last year, the old swinging gate. I think it was the Missouri game. You've got to be a little quicker with it. And, uh, yeah, and Bob Simmons said he was going to pull everything out of the bag, and he did. Jeff Bauer knows that they may need that down the road. You know what impressed me about the Southern Miss program? I really work hard, and they practice hard. These kids and these coaches put a tremendous amount of energy and a lot of passion into playing football in this football program, and, you know, they're all to be congratulated for it. Yeah, they're coming back out. Difficult week for Jeff Bauer, as we mentioned at the top of the show. But he has stood tall. And our hat is off to Jeff Bauer and his staff. Two-point conversion attempt. Might as well practice it now. Roberts again in the hands and dropped. Raymond Walls had it right in the old meat hooks and couldn't wrap it up. You know what, though? They're still playing hard. Yeah. I don't see any give up in this Southern Miss team. And they haven't given up the emotion, especially after the touchdown. They've stayed throughout the whole game along with the core. Marching band at Texas A&M on the far side. They haven't left. Well, Ron Fool, I think it's going to be an onside kick here. <laughs> Well, I'm going to go out on a limb, though, and say too little, too late. Well, Jeff Bauer said, I haven't been a very good guy the last couple of weeks after that disappointing loss in Penn State, and it doesn't get any easier for him. It's no fun to lose, but you got to keep competing like they're doing and keep playing. There have been a lot of good things. I think what they're going to look at mainly, the drop passes. Here's the outside kick attempt. Through the legs of Texas A&M, and it'll be a penalty. A&M said, we're just going to take the ball. You know, onside kicks, to me, are very difficult on grass. They're great on, this, on the artificial surface because you can get the ball to do all kinds of crazy bounces and stuff. But on grass, and especially wet, the ball never bounces. Right. You know, and you don't get it. And this is a soft turf, too. We were walking <laughs> yeah, on Thursday and Friday just before the rain. The yeah, before the rain, it was soft. Really soft right now. So with 53 seconds left, Texas A&M will go to 2-1 and one on the year. Southern Miss will drop to 0-2. And the college football Saturday post-game studio report immediately following our contest. And then, of course, more football. North Carolina at Stanford, Barry Tompkins, Tom Ramsey, Eric Clemens standing by. we got a bunch of football for you coming up. Kevin and Kellen, a couple of K's, special K's. They're standing by with scores and highlights of all the college football. They'll update you on that UCLA-Houston game. Talk about Dante Culpepper, his tough afternoon. You know, Texas A&M's got a couple of tight ends, uh, Dan Campbell and Derek Spiller, that kind of remind us of uh, Kellen Winslow. Big athletic guys that can run and catch. I'm not saying they're as good as Kellen, but they're, they're athletic, big tight ends that do things well. Run, block, catch. You know, Kellen probably just slugged Frazier now and said, I'm better than them, aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> Kevin probably got a big divot in his arm. This might be the final play of the ball game for Texas A&M, and hats off to their defense, and Mike Hankowitz, Sarcy Slocum, knew that it was going to be a hornet's nest coming into this game, but boy, I tell you, his team rose to the occasion, overcame the suspension of Tiki Hardeman. Defense played well. They made the plays they need to do, and they walk away with a win. The final, Texas A&M over Southern Miss, 24-6. Artie, your thoughts on the game? The thoughts are, it ended up being exactly what we talked about, a defensive struggle, and again, A&M is a better football team. Their defense was able to control the Southern Miss offense and literally shut it down. So you got to give a congratulations to R.C. Slocum and his staff and his football team. They dominated this game, not only with the turnovers, but also field position. Now let's send it to our college football Saturday studio with Kevin and Kellen. Gentlemen. Thanks a lot.
a lot, guys, and don't budge. We'll head back out to Hattiesburg in a few minutes, but right now.